The old mission has long served as a symbol of Texas independence. Now dwarfed by the emerging skyline of dynamic San Antonio. Tonight, it's a sea of holiday celebration and full anticipation. Its 20th century namesake, the Alamo Dome, is where again two powers prepare to do battle. One from the southwest with its long gray line, the core, and their battled warrior, wounded, hoping to start. And from the Northland, the storied maize and blue, their tradition ruggedly carried on by their emerging star. And yet, like all stories and special circumstances, others hoping, waiting to seize their moment, all eager to make their mark, complete their mission on this modern-day battlefield, the Builder Square Alamo Bowl. the year went by too fast, look at the bright side. The end of the year just got here soon. It's the year in countdown at your Chevy Geo dealer. With special values right now, like GMAC's affordable smart buy. Get to know Geo Prism for less than you think. What's more, 98% of Prism owners would recommend Prism to a friend. Whoever said time flies when you're having fun must have been driving with Geo. The year end countdown is going on now at your North Texas Chevy Geo. ESPN's coverage of the Builder Square Alamo Bowl is presented by Builder Square. We'll get you squared away. And in part by Home Box Office and by McDonald's. Have you had your break today? Welcome back to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Number 14, Michigan, against number 19, Texas A&M. And as you might imagine at this juncture, the house is jumping. Both clubs have just come out on the field, and we are very close to kickoff time. Tim Biakabatuka, the All-American running back out of Michigan, over 1,700 yards. And, of course, for Texas A&M, Leland McElroy, over 1,100 yards for him, an All-American kick return man last year. And Mike Godfrey. The big question mark here tonight is, can Leland McElroy go? 99.9% sure he's not going to be able to play in this ballgame. What does that do to the Aggies? Well, Ron, the injury happened 10 days ago, so three freshmen are going to be cast in that role tonight, and they have to step it up. But I think all the pressure of A&M will fall on their quarterback, Corey Pulley. He has to have a great night, has to have the big plays. And the most important thing for A&M, win first down. Get four more yards so they're not in long yardage situations against this Michigan defense. Mike, let me suppose then, if I'm Texas A&M and, and I'm facing a back like Bianca Batuco over 300 yards against Ohio State, i got to close the door on him or else my evening is lost. You'd be a great defensive coordinator because they have to move the extra man up. They've got to put eight men up to stop Michigan in the running game. Big line, Bianca Batuca stop him. They're going to try to make Brian Greasy beat him. Blitz, which means one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Look for the receivers of Michigan to have big nights, especially Imani Toomer. Mike Adamley, as usual, down on the sideline with us, and let's go down to him and further news on McElroy. Mike? So obviously we're having some technical problems with uh, his microphone, and we'll get back to him just as soon as we can because he visited with McElroy as he came back out just a couple of moments ago. And Michigan has won the toss, and they will defer to the second half. Lloyd Carr, most everyone knows the story. First season as head coach, 9-3 and three on the year. Played Virginia in that uh, early preseason game. And R.C. Slocum, seven years at Texas A&M, an 81% winning percentage for him. 67-15-2. and two. So Michigan kicks it off. They will put their defense on the field first. As you look at Connell, Albert Connell, a junior transfer from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He is their big play guy. Jay Feely will kick it off for the Michigan Wolverines. to 
to a capacity house of almost 65,000 here tonight, and we're underway. This is Connor from the five. 15, Wedge in front, almost broke it to the outside, and he's to the 31-yard line. And this answers our question, Mike, as far as starting in this ball game, Leland McElroy on the sidelines, and he won't start anyway. Now, whether they will give him an opportunity to play, we don't know. 13 touchdowns, an average of almost five yards a carry for him. Sir Parker, freshman this time last year, was playing high school football in Los Angeles. We'll replace him tonight. Also joining him is DeAndre Hardiman. They roll the pocket on first down. Pass is knocked away. And that is 37, Jared Irons, who got a hand on it to deflect that pass at the 35-yard line. Offensively for Texas A&M, quarterback Corey Pulling, the winningest quarterback in A&M history, but without McElroy, as Mike said, a lot of pressure on him tonight. The wide receivers, good ones. Albert Connell, though, is their go-to guy. Up front with the offensive line, Hunter Goodwin is the best of the group at right tackle. A converted tight end. Straight ahead with a running play. Hardeman with a gain of three. It's Horn who makes the tackle. And let's take a look at the starters on defense for the Michigan Wolverines tonight. This is a good down group. Jason Horn gets a lot of credit, but Zinkowitz sees the blue-collar guy and will call his name a lot tonight. Jared Irons, he's already shown that he's one of the really active linebackers in the country. He is from Texas. He deflected the pass a moment ago. And the big play guy in the secondary, freshman Charles Woodson. First team all Big Ten had two interceptions in that huge upset over Ohio State. Pulling with a play action. On third down, lobs the pass. Looked as though he had space to run. Elected the pass and he overthrew Connell. Ron, he made a bad decision because he did have a chance to run for the first down, chose not to. But Corey Pulling's had an up and down year. But when you look at his record, most wins as an active quarterback. He has 32 wins. He's tied with Tommy Frazier of Nebraska. Here's the fake. No one outside. Michigan took Sean the bait Curry. on the run. He had room to run for the first down. Charles Woodson in coverage. Sean Terry who has increased his average by almost seven yards since the beginning of the year, kicks it away to Mercury Hayes. Returnable at the 28. Flag comes down at the 30-yard line as he will take it out to the 40. 33 yards on the kick and 11 yards on the return. by Mercury Hayes. Gives us an opportunity to introduce our officials tonight. That's Mac Jensen. Getting a block in the back. Ten yards. Just ball the foul. First down. Mac, we last saw in that Auburn-Alabama game. Of course, he is from the Southeastern Conference. So here are the starters on offense for the Michigan Wolverines. They like to run. And they have the weapons to do it. But the pressure, just like on AM, it's on the quarterback, Brian Greasy, as AM will try to focus on him. The wide receivers, very good group. The go-to guy for Michigan, Mercury Hayes, and he's back at home in Texas. And the offensive line, Joe Marinero at guard, has again been selected by his team as the most outstanding offensive line. Greasy with a running for Bianca Batuka gets attacked at the line of scrimmage, and it's the young man we were about to talk about off the top of the telecast here for the A&M defense, Pat Williams. He's a junior transfer, along with Brandon Mitchell. They are the two steady performers on that down three. The linebackers, as a group, may be as good, plus their reserves, as anybody in the country. Reggie Brown, very good as a pass rusher. And in the secondary, this is an area where they are thin. Mike will talk more about this. Wade Mickens, though, is an All-American. And everywhere that Hayes goes tonight, look for Mickens. The Akabatuka hit at the line of scrimmage. And it's Brandon Mitchell, who we were just mentioning as one of the consistent and steady performers, makes the hit on him. Ron, a ms a gambling-style defense. They're going to blitz. They're going to come after you, which means they've got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. A big percentage of the night. Amani Toomer is going to work against Piper McMullen, number six. He's a safety moved out the corner. I think that's the match that Michigan will take advantage of. It is third now, and the line to make is the 30. Gracie back to throw. 
throw. Steps comfortably in the pocket. Now he's going to run it. And he will have the first down at the 32-yard line. Larry Walker is there to make the hit. And very interesting, we had similar situations. Reezy chose to run. He picked up his first down. And as a result, they won't have to punt. Well, talking to Kit Cartwright, the quarterback coach for Michigan, he says that Brian Greasy just gets better and better each week. But he handles the mental phase of the game. Here you see him back to pass, but there really is nothing there. Intelligently, pulls the ball down, picks up the first down, keeps the drive alive. From the 31-yard line, opening sequence of the night for the Michigan Wolverines. Boy, Texas A&M crowds with 11 at the line of scrimmage. Bianca Batuta hit at the line of scrimmage. He may have won, but Larry Walker was right there with penetration. And Mike, that is the difference so far. They're getting penetration on a good Michigan. This is ESPN, the total sport. Coordinator, he said, when you watch the Ohio State game, Tim Biakabatuka just got off to a great start. Three runs, had nearly 90 yards. He said, we do not want him to get started tonight. We're going to try to penetrate early, try to keep his confidence down a little bit. Lloyd Carr told me yesterday morning, uh, just before his uh, morning press conference, he said, if they put us in a situation where we can't get to our wide receivers, it's a long night for Michigan. Second and long. They take the reverse. The after the two going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped at the 24, and it's Reggie Brown, the defensive captain, who's there. Those are not good plays against this a and defense. It looked like it was a reverse, but... When you gamble on a reverse call against a team like uh, Texas A&M, they, if they're coming and they're blitzing, and they are on this play, you're not going to have time to get this reverse off. You see, they just busted up. Tim Biakabatuka never had a chance to get to the wide receiver to give him the football. Sean Horn, number 21, with a tackle. You could see John Runyon, 69, the all-Big Ten uh, tackle, said he was trying to pull, saying, wait a minute, where are all these people coming from? It looks like a jailbreak. And he counted too many players. Gracie sets, good protection. Has his pass underthrown. Kilmer is who he wanted, and Mike, I think he saw McMullen playing possum off the ball and therefore threw it away. Well, when Michigan comes back on offense, they need to take advantage first down, second down, passing downs of taking advantage of what AM's trying to do to him. AM's saying, hey, you're not going to run the football against us. We're going to give you one on one on the outside, but we're not going to allow you to run the football. Peristeris. Waiting for the snap back at the 10-yard line. Ray Mickens is the deep man for the action. In over end, and he signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 44-yard line. So, a stop for the Texas A&M defense as they get a breather on the sideline. We'll be back with more from San Antonio after this. With all its restaurants, cafes, and riverboats. It really highlights San Antonio's nightlife at this time of year, of course, with the holiday season in this bowl game. Very, very festive mood. This, uh, this city has got a young bowl game that is very much on the rise, Mike Godfrey. Good crowd tonight. Uh, Michigan a and people flocking to the city. Smith and Sir Parker, the running backs for the Texas Aggies. And this is Parker. Has five yards right up the middle. And let's go down and check in with Mike Adamley. Mike? Well, Ron, a little further word on Leland McElroy. Uh, several people who don't believe that he is not going to play tonight are the Michigan defensive coaches, especially defensive coordinator Greg Madison. Uh, they figure that if a guy is dressed and suited up, then he's got to play. The old adage, however, that uh, you practice as you play, well, I believe in that too, and I don't think he's going to play tonight, but I did talk to him before the game. He said he's going to be used in a reserve role, so we'll wait and find out. Well, his substitute, uh, Mike, has just taken it for the initial first down of the night. Uh, Parker tackled by Parker. Clarence Thompson, and he is at the 45-yard line. Very good block by Goodwin, 67. Ron, you dress a player like Leland McElroy for the morale purposes on the sideline, as Mike was talking about. You, you, the fact that he can work with these younger backs, the three freshmen, he can talk to them about what he sees from the sideline. First time tonight for A&M to be in Michigan territory. Wolverines show blitz. They stay at home. And it's Parker again, and he will fight his way for three, maybe four yards. William Carr, who we were told just prior to the ball game, 
is suffering a little bit of a bout with the flu, but he is starting tonight. And this is one of those things. He's from Dallas. He plays in Michigan, but he wouldn't dare miss a start in this one coming back home. No, he wants to play. And, Ron, the key for AM is first down. they got to pick up four or five yards. They do not want to put Corey Pulley in tough situations. The three games they lost, they had 12 turnovers. Two tight ends, two wide receivers, one setback. That's Chris Sanders in motion coming to the bottom of your screen, and they go running play. Parker hits nice defensive work. I told you Trent Zinkowitz, and he'll be all over the place tonight. 6'6", 267 pounds. He's out of Cleveland, Ohio. And, Mike, in the last time that we had Michigan, you remember he couldn't start the game against B.C. He came in and played. He was nicked early in the year, but when he was healthy, he has really caused misery for the offense. Well, the new defensive scheme, trying to get penetration out of the defensive lineman, has really helped Trent Zinkowitz. He's a more aggressive player. Texas A&M now, with just what Mike Gottfried was talking about, they don't want. They have a third down, and about seven line to make is the 35. They go option. Parker with the pitch gets one block, tries to kick it to the outside, and that pause cost it as Charles Woodson with an absolutely marvelous open field tackle. Well, a lot of people that follow Michigan football think Charles Woodson's the best corner in Michigan since Ty Law. He's really stayed focused. He's a true freshman. Here's the kick out on the option. Charles Woodson, number two, is going to come in and make a tackle on Sir Parker to keep them from the first down marker. Boy, that is really nice defensive work. Terry to kick it away. He's kicking it for the sideline. and m has a man at the seven, and he will catch it and down the ball. Toya Jones down. We'll take a break as the freshman nails it inside the 10. We'll be right back. Looking for a paint store that covers everything? Get hit to the square. Builder Square is your prime source for paint. Starting with Glidden and Dutch Boy brands. With free computer color matching to any shade. Plus specialty brands, stains, and every painting accessory imaginable. There's even advice to make things go smoothly. All at great square deal prices. Builder Square. We'll get you squared away. Starlight. Starbright. The first star. I see. We uh, have quite a defensive struggle going in the early first quarter of this ball game. Mike, we've talked about the matchups as far as the players are concerned. How about the coaches? Fred Jackson, the offensive coordinator at Michigan. Going up against Phil Bennett, defensive coordinator for Texas A&M. They used to be on the same staff at Purdue, so they know each other well. Well, they know each other, and Phil Bennett's saying, hey, I can play man-to-man -man on the outside, and I'm going to win. Fred Jackson on the other side says, you can't do that. I'm going to win. So tonight, we're going to find out who wins between, between these two coaches. Maybe show blitz, and they come with it. The after the two days. Fumbles the ball. Texas A&M recovers at the five-yard line. Nope, Michigan is saying they have it. It is A&M ball, and it's recovered by Reggie Brown. They're a defense that turns the football over. They get a lot of penetration. The A&M defense trying not to let Tim Biakabatuka get started tonight. You're going to see the action here. A little delayed draw to Tim Biaka, but two can just has no place for him to run. Pat Williams, number 99, knocked the ball away from Tim Biaka, but So the Aggies, can they take advantage of the first mistake by either of these ball clubs tonight? Have it at the five-yard line, and Mike credits special teams in the punt that went dead at the seven-yard line. Big mistake by Michigan on special teams. We'll talk about it here in a second, Ron. And pull it comes immediately out from under center and calls a timeout. So we'll take it with him. 7-19 left in this opening quarter. We'll be right back. Back to San Antonio. Michigan with the fumble after receiving ball at the 7-yard line. They turn it over at the 5. Thanks to a good defensive play by Pat Williams who caused the fumble. Reggie Brown recovered it. And now the Wolverines need to close the door. Eric Bernard, the freshman, is coming to tailback. He 
gets the handoff as they try to go left and the Michigan defense is there to throw him for a five-yard loss and it's William Carr. Brown, I want to go back to the special teams play I was talking about. Mercury Hayes was the punt returner and he allowed Toya Jones, number five, to catch the football. He had to make an effort to get over by the ball, make the fair catch signal, at least not allow Toya Jones to catch the ball on the fly. Well, Detron Smith, the fullback, has come out of the lineup, and Texas A&M will go with two wide receivers, two tight ends, and Eric Bernard at tailback. They go to the right with Bernard. Looks for a block. Turns it up at the five. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Charles Woodson, the all-conference freshman cornerback, is down in the end zone. He came up trying to stuff the play. Chris Sanders, number seven, the wide receiver, who is a senior for Texas A&M out of Austin, Texas, threw a paving block on the play. And I'm not sure if it was Sanders who got Woodson or not. We'll take a look. Where Eric Bernard, the coaches knew he was going to be a very fine back Freshman number 22 just gets good blocking. Chris Sanders, number seven, there's the block on Woodrow Hankins for the touchdown. But when you talk to the AM coaches, they talked about Bernard, and one of the benefits is when you go is you see the block again by Chris Sanders. But when you go to a bowl game, you get those extra practice days, and they felt like Eric Bernard really benefited from the 13 extra practices and just kind of grew into this role of tailback. You thought the way he got hit, not only by the Texas A&M player, but by his teammate, that possibly he just got the wind knocked out of him. But uh, they are looking at his uh, at his left leg. The problem for Michigan right now is the fact that they've got to solve the A&M defense, Ron. They they're having trouble running against that eight-man front. They've got to open it up a little bit with Brian Grayson. Well, there's Greg Madison on the sideline. We were talking about the coaches and the matchups in this ballgame. Greg used to be a Texas A&M, so he knows the Aggie system very well. He knows A&M. He worked as a defensive uh, linebacker line coach for Bob Davey when Bob Davey was the defensive coordinator now at Notre Dame. He coordinates the defense for Lloyd Carr. Well, I thought that was going to be better news on Woodson. He got up on his own, but now they are helping him off the field. And we'll get a report just as soon as we can. But that youngster, he's out of Fremont, Ohio. Mr. Football, just when he came out of high school last year. And he has really put on a show in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. He had, make first team in that conference your first year. Well, he attended Michigan's camp as a high school junior. And he told the coaches when he attended that camp, he said, I'm coming to Michigan. And he knew as a sophomore in high school he wanted to play defense. Got a lot of skill to be an offensive player, but he wanted to be a corner. This is Kyle Bryant to attempt the extra point from the 10. Stormy Case, reserve quarterback out of Odessa, is holding number 10. He knocks it home. And with six minutes, 35 seconds left to play in this opening quarter, our new score, Texas A&M 7 and Michigan nothing. The key play, Ron, Pat Williams, number 99, a down defensive lineman for Texas A&M. He's going to make the hit on Tim Biakabatuka, number 21, force the fumble. Great field position for the A&M offense, and the wrecking crew defense did their job. When you gamble like that, uh, Mike, there are times when you can get burned, but when the defense does this kind of work for you, two plays, five yards, 44 seconds, then that's how it pays off. But can they continue to gamble this way all night well, they, without getting burned by Michigan? They can, but they've got a matchup in the secondary uh, against uh, Amani Toomer that I think benefits Michigan. I said it from the start. Amani Toomer, six foot four, and he's working against Typhoon McMullen, who's uh, six foot two safety who's playing corner tonight so they've really got a challenge to see if McMullen's good enough to set down the Amani Toomer 
There's Tuber right there. You were looking at Mercury Hayes, number nine. The duel set up deep for the return. Kyle Bryant will kick it off for Texas A&M. Come on, Bryant's kick straight away. This is going to Mercury Hayes. Three yards deep in the end zone. They will scrimmage from the 20. Ron, the Carmel Bowl Week continues tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern, with the bowl kickoff show. Then it's LSU and Michigan State in the Pula and Weed Eater Independence Bowl, followed by K-State, Colorado State in the Plymouth Holiday Bowl. On your home for college football, ESPN. You know, Mike is, uh, they take, I'm sorry, go ahead and uh, continue. I, I, was, your... I was saying that Michigan, when the success they have in the football is Ohio State, A&M has watched that tape and really trying to work to, to stop Tim Biakabatuka tonight. He got off 300-some yards against Ohio State. Phil Bennett, yeah. Phil Bennett said, we're not going to allow him to run the football tonight. I think Texas A&M was offside on this kickoff, and Michigan's going to ask them to do it again. So a kick that went about five yards deep in the end zone. Uh, the Aggie special teams are regrouping on the sideline, and that's exactly what will happen. We were looking at the promo as we see the deep backs again for Michigan. But the promo on the upcoming bowl game, it's been interesting like how high scoring the early bowl games have been. Last night, Texas Tech and Air Force, I didn't, I didn't think they'd ever quit score. And this one doesn't figure to be that way with no. the two good defenses, even though we've got a 7-0 lead here early. Uh, two strong of defenses here today, tonight, uh, to, to allow that kind of scoring game. Lloyd Carr. said that one of the reasons that this trip is so important to Michigan is because Texas has become such a hotbed of recruiting for the Wolverines. They've already got nine kids from the state of Texas on their roster. Here's the kick. About the same distance that it's going to be taken at the seven-yard line. Hey, tries to get to the sideline, and he was tripped up at the 21-yard line. It's 15 on the return. So Biaka Batuka will come right back on the field. And, of course, the thing you want to do with any back, whether he had 1,700 or not, if he's one of your regulars, after a kid turns it over, you want to give it back to him, and they want to prove that they can get that out of their system, don't they? Well, they're going to give the ball to Tim Biaka Batuka because he's the heart of this offense behind that big offensive line. Runyon, Jensen, Payne, Marinero, and Jensen up front. Reaching the play action with a throw on first down and going on top. He's got Coomer, and a flag is down. Two flags, and it's Tyvel McMullen who was out there, and all he was saying was, I'll take the 15 yards. If I don't, you're going to score a touchdown. Well, that's the matchup that you figure that they've got to exploit tonight. I mean, it's you've got a, a veteran receiver against a safety that has to move outside because the corner's down and injured. So Tyvel McMullen, I think he's got his hands full, especially on first downs with Armani Tumor. Made a great move there. Interference, defense, 15-yard penalty, all the back first down. What this will do now is this will set up the underneath passes because all of a sudden Typhoon McMullen now knows Amani Toomer has great speed. He just ran right by him. And he's locked on man-to-man outside. There's no help. First down for Michigan at their own 38-yard line. Counter Trey. Bianca Patuka hit behind the line of scrimmage, and only because of good balance and strength is he able to pick up one yard. And a flag is down across the way as Edward Jasper made the stop for the Aggies. And let's go down and check in with Mike Adamley. Mike? Well, Ron and Mike, the word on Charles Woodson, not good for the Michigan defense. Talking to their medical staff, he has sustained some kind of damage to the medial ligament in his left knee. They're not sure the extent of the damage. They're going to take him into the locker room. There are x-ray machines here in the Alamo Dome, but he is definitely out for the remainder of this contest. Boy, that is tough news, not only for Michigan, but for the great kid who has had a wonderful season. And A&M has been called for a personal foul, so now back-to-back 15-yard penalties. And I would imagine R.C. Slocum is saying on the sideline, hey, fellas, we don't need to help them. They're good enough. Chris Lloyd, the lone setback. He collides with his quarterback as another flag comes down, and now here's another one. 
Reggie Brown makes the stop for Texas A&M. Boy, Brian Greasy and Chris Loy just ran together on the handoff. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Timing off a little bit here. Brian Greasy trying to turn and a collision with Chris Floyd. Reggie Brown on the tackle. So, five yards stepped off. The new line of scrimmage just inside the 40-yard line of Texas A&M. Deepest penetration by Michigan tonight. Rumors not in motion. He'll reset on the left side. Greasy going on top again. This time looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. Amani Toomer working against Nick Mullins. The flag that is down in the end zone is going to be pass interference again. And Mike, you called it straight away just before that last attempt. Not this one, but the one before. Bill Bennett had said, we got some... We got some problems in the secondary, and I hope they don't exploit it early. Well, when Guess you, what? Yeah, when you blitz, I mean, that's a, you have to have corners with mentality that every play, uh, the game's on the line. Amani Toomer is a better receiver than the corner type of Mullen. But now what's going to happen is Bill Bennett's got to say, okay, can I handle Amani Toomer one-on-one, or can I, do I have to pull that eighth guy out? And that's going to open Tim Biakotuka. Tim Biakotuka should be happy now because that might open the running game. Well, you can see Ray Mickens, number 24, the All-American corner for Texas A&M on the other side, over talking to McMullen, trying to calm him down. Because it's Donovan Greer who should be playing that position. Injured his ACL, he will have surgery. So obviously he's out of this ballgame tonight. High pass from center. Hamilton does a good job of showing patience and knocks it through and we're tied with 529 left opening quarter. A couple penalties by AM, one a smart one by Ty from McMullen because the interference you know, sees the pressure of Texas AM's defense. They're saying, hey, we're gonna get to the quarterback before he throws it. Good pass protection. Ryan Greasy really protected has the one-on-one Amani Tumor on the outside. Just again, just a street route running by Typhoon McMullen. And then there's the interference that Ron called. Touchdown, Michigan. That opens up the short passing game that they, they want to throw out there with Tumor against McMullen. Phil Bennett has some questions to answer now. So Tumor comes up with the touchdown. Michigan is on the board, and we are tied. As we take a look at the scoring drive, only two plays, 77 yards, and 35 yards in penalties by Texas A&M. Michigan, but those three penalties for that distance is almost the same as a turnover. You almost look at it as evening up. Yeah. Except that you cannot give a team the ball on the seven-yard line as Michigan gave AM's offense. They have to make AM's offense work. Good call by Fred Jackson, the offensive coordinator. Pass plan. Brian Greasy with a couple good throws in that drive. So the penalty is being assessed here on the kickoff, and he's going to kick it completely out of the end zone. Well, coming up on Sunday night on ESPN2, ring in the new year with the NASCAR Marathon. 30 straight hours of the best short track and super speedway excitement. Minutes <laughs> got real lively in the last two minutes. Parker on the counter tray. Tries to get outside on the left, and that is a great job by Sam Ward, a red shirt freshman out of Saginaw, and he was right there to diagnose it, and a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Let's check it. This is becoming a very spirited contest early, Mike, with a late hit was called on the play. So 15 yards stepped off. So mark out 
the good defensive play by Sam Ford. And 15 yards, moving the ball out to the 34. They fake the counter trade this time. And pull it close, it's complete. Oh, what a hit at the 41. Spiller maintained his balance. How? I don't have any idea because Clarence Thomas almost knocked him out of Bear County. Clarence Thompson with a big hit. I'm not sure he wasn't out of bounds, but they didn't call it after he was spinning around there a little bit. Clarence Thompson, number 17, who told his father, who was a real big Michigan fan, he grew up in Detroit, Martin Luther King High School, he said he wasn't going to Michigan. He decided to go to Oklahoma, but then his dad had him reconsider. I think he was out of bounds there in that spin move. <laughs> it did. It was a pretty good move, though, wasn't it? It was fun to watch. Hardeman. Left side will take it for three. And it's going to be a third down AM at the 30. Let's make it the 42. And to keep this drive going, they got to pick up two more yards. Ron, in our game on January 1st, we've got Penn State against Auburn. And Penn State had success against Michigan. They ran for 245 yards versus this Michigan defense. Michigan held seven teams under 100 yards rushing per game this season. Leland McElroy. Paces on the sideline, unable to go tonight. You're right, Penn State is the only team really that ran against this Michigan defense. Sanders in motion. Quick handoff. I'll tell you what, if Parker doesn't get tripped up by Ford, and I'm not too sure it was him who got his hand out. I think maybe Andre Weathers got a hand. He might have been brought up the sideline. Michigan was very tight at the line of scrimmage defensively. You're going to see Andre Weathers, who's the backup for Charles Woodson, the injured number 30, come up and just miss the tackle on Sir Parker. And that's, uh, again, he just really just missed it. You're right, Sir Parker stands up. He goes for a touchdown there. Glenn Steele, number 81, out of Ligonier, Indiana is uh, going off the field he was shaken up very good pass rusher for uh, for the michigan wolverines looks as though we'll uh, we'll see him back shortly though just winded uh, nothing major 7-7 if you've just joined us we are about to go into four minutes in this opening quarter counter tray back into the boundary parker looking for a spot to run and he's going to be stopped after a gain of five. Woodrow Hankins holding on to him. And a flag has gone down at the point of the tackle. Let's see what that is about. This could be another late hit by Michigan. Flag on the play. Dead ball. First of five. Defense. 15 yards. This is interesting. AM gave up 35 yards in penalties on their last drive, or Michigan's last drive, and now this is 30 against the Wolverines. Well, you're talking about it even and up. It's no longer even up. Uh, Michigan now is making too many mistakes. Will Carr with good penetration. Good block by Steve McKinney, number 72. Woodrow Hankins finally making the tackle. Eric Bernard checks in the tailback. Here comes that counter play again. Bernard behind those big offensive linemen. He gets whacked down hard. Pirates Thomas has proven he's really a hitter, but he also needs to lock up a little better, don't you think, Mike? He really, he really does, Ron. Uh, Clarence Thompson is really a, a fine defensive back. You look at uh, Leland McElroy's backups. He didn't play a lot during the year. Uh, Bernard, who's having success now, 8.3 yards per rush. Good, strong, solid back. Does it take three guys to replace him? I'd say maybe four or five. <laughs> we'll play at the end of the night. Sanders again in motion, and his big opener to the left side has five. Counted off at close to ten yards, Eric Bernard. Mike, to me, the interesting thing about Bernard, Hardeman, and Parker, this time last year, all three of these kids were playing high school football. Well, you know, the way the scholarship situation is now, freshmen have to play right away in a lot of schools. And you talk about the end of the season, the timing. We've been through probably 17 weeks of football, so they're no longer freshmen now. They're, uh, they're upperclassmen in uh, knowing what they want in Texas A&M's offensive scheme. And for more on that, let's check downstairs with Mike Adamley. Mike? Well, you know, Texas A&M's 1995 recruiting class was, again, rated one of the best in the country, and those three freshman tailbacks are part of the reason 
Parker was rated the number two back in the state of California. Hardeman was considered the, the best prep runner in Texas. And Eric Bernard was the top tailback from Tulsa, Oklahoma. So that's pretty impressive. They're not ordinary high school kids. All run 4 4 40. They got great speed, but they don't exactly have Leland McElroy's warp speed. But they are terrific prospects. You know, that's a good point. Leland has run, has been clocked at 4-3. Uh, at Some people say below that. As you look at Rashid Simmons, that's the reason for the delay. He was shaken up, but obviously okay as he goes off the field under his own power. What Leland McElroy has besides that speed, though, is God-given, which means he can go side to side as quickly as he can go north and south, Mike, and that's what makes him so devastating. A lot of good backs in the country, and Leland McElroy's missed, but that's why I think he's on the field tonight, to give morale and support for these three freshmen. Where they really missed him, not only a tailback, though, is what last year he led the nation in kickoff return, in field position. Parker to the right side. Here comes the flag, and we may have a clip called against Texas A&M as Irons makes the tackle. Maybe a holding call. Oh, it looked right. like uh, Kobe Hackrat, number 69. Holding, offense, 10 yards, the far foul, first down. Well, that's it. So Texas A&M uh, enjoying prosperity, and then they kind of aim that gun at their own foot, and they take a walk back. To have success on the outside, your tight end has to block. He would play number 89 with a block on Glenn Steele. If the tight end can get that block, Ron, or just get a steal made of that block, then you can get to the corner. Well, look at the penalties already. Six against A&M, three against Michigan. Makes the run, wants to throw, goes to the end zone, and he just threw it into coverage and it was intercepted out of the end zone. Hankins came up with the ball, and Pullig is very, very fortunate because he just threw it into coverage. William Carr was all over it. And he's been doing relatively well as far as throwing the football. Coming into this game round, he's had 134 attempts without an interception. Got a little lucky here. William Carr, the Texan, put pressure on Corey Pullig, and the ball is just up for Connell, number 80, but uh, good coverage. Rico Hankins just ran out of room. Chuck Winters, 35, safety in good shape. Mike, this is the third time now in the first quarter they've done this. They've got both of those young tailbacks in the ballgame. After the play, we need to get you to explain what they're trying to achieve. Hard of this time. Left side. Puts the head down as he goes inside the 25. Jason Horn is holding on to him to the 22-yard line. Well, when you bring both tailbacks in, you're, you're saying to your fullback, uh, Detron Smith is more of an eye fullback. He's a blocking type back. And on that play, the split back set that they brought both backs in just ran a draw. So trying to get the ball at both those young guys, trying to give them playing time in there, trying to use them as pass receivers, blockers, just trying to get them both in the game for a double threat. Third down, line to make, the Michigan six. Wolverine, show blitz, quick pass right over the middle. 15 at the 10, he's not going to have it. Parker showed his maneuverability, and that time, I think, did a better job instead of... Sometimes he wiggles too much. He needs to go north and south. He is so quick. Good play call by Steve Emslinger, the offensive coordinator. This is the old uh, run-and-shoot screen where you let your linemen go right downfield. College football, they can go downfield, ball pass behind the line of scrimmage. Sir Parker on the screen, Trent Zinkowitz, number 76, and on the tackle. So the field goal attempt, it will be placed down at the 17. You see Bryant's longest, 41, and this attempt here, 27. Hit the upright. And it went through. R.C. Slocum says Gigham will take it. 32 seconds left in this opening quarter. 10-7, Texas A&M. Well, here it is again. Watch it hit this upright. I mean, he hits it pretty squarely, but he hits it on the inside. And Karam, in the stats and in tomorrow's newspaper, you see the body English by Bryant, is, uh, it'll look like it was just right down the heart. Called it all the way around, off the scoreboard, off the side, and then go post right in. Reminded those days in the front yard, huh? 
10 to 7. Texas A&M leading over Michigan. You know, Mike, we were commenting that during the pregame show here at uh, the Alamo Bowl. Uh, <laughs> not only are these two football teams really fine units and coming from schools of great tradition, these two bands are as good as there is in the country. And the pregame show was well, well worth the attention of everybody. The crowd, the crowd was really glued to it and enjoyed it. Zuber and Hayes again, back to the dual safety for Michigan. And again, he knocks it in the end zone. That's Hayes. And Michigan will scrimmage from their own 20-yard line. So Bryant does his work. Bianca Batuka comes on. They're 80 yards away. Well, he had a fast start against Ohio State. He's got almost three full quarters left here, but right now, six carries, minus four yards. Born in Zaire, large family, and his father came to Montreal to work on his doctorate in philosophy. He came to the Michigan football camp, and that's how they found out about him. Three wide receivers this time by Michigan, and the lone setback. Gracie gets it out to the off of the Tuka. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds after a gain of a couple by Larry Walker. Not after the Penn State loss, Tim Diakovituka walked into Lloyd Carr's office and he told him, he says, I'm going to play well against Ohio State. I want to prove I'm as good or better than Eddie George. And Lloyd Carr then went with Fred Jackson and the offensive staff and they felt like they were going to build their game plan on Tim Diakovituka because he was very confident on that Sunday evening and he played very well against Ohio State. 313 yards. Unbelievable. Second down. Here he comes to the near sideline. Looks for a block, and this time he finds a little crease, and that's all he needs. Out close to the 30, as that win will make the stop on him. Michigan spent a lot of time looking at the Texas, Texas A&M tape. Texas in the first half, John McEvick ran a lot of counter plays and didn't have a lot of success in the first half. Stayed with it second half, opened up this A&M defense. That is the end of the first quarter, so let's take a break. And as we head to intermission, A&M 10, Michigan 7. Texas, the Builder Square Alamo Bowl. 10-7 are numbers uh, at the end of the first 15 minutes. And it is Michigan with a third down in just inches. The ball just shy of the 30-yard line. Breezy straight ahead with the quarterback sneak. And he will have the first down at around the 31. Greasy on the heel. First down, Wolverines. Brian Greasy came to Michigan as a walk-on. Purdue and a lot of other schools tried to give him a scholarship. He wanted to go to Michigan. In about the third week there at school in practice, Lloyd Carr rewarded him with a scholarship. And right at the end of spring practice, they were even... Uh, uh, at the quarterback position, Scott drives back and Brian Greasy. Scott drives back, got the start. Brian Greasy, of course, now replacing the injured drives back. So they'll have a battle again come spring if uh, Ozaki is healthy and set to go. Yaka Patuka takes it straight ahead for three. Keith Mitchell, the junior out of Garland, Texas, is there to make the stop for the Aggies. By Jasper and Walker. What has Will Bennett changed to keep Michigan from trying to go up on top with a mismatch again, Mike? Well, they still have it outside. And what, what, most of the time, Ray Mickens, number 24, is on Mercury Hayes, and he's the best corner for Texas A&M. McMullen, number 6, is still working against Kamani Toomer. And they line up back into the short side of the field, and with that, uh, Mark Campbell, uh, the tight end, did not get on the field in time. They didn't want a delay penalty, so we'll take... The timeout with them. 14.02 left until halftime. We'll be right back. What's the pressure by Brian Greasy? Terrific throw. It really was. The ball at the 31 yard line of AM. Bianca Batuka tries to get outside. Breaks the tackle. High five. Has 10. Got it off at 12. 
That win finally makes the stop for Texas A&M, but that is the type of running that the Akabatuka kills you with. He breaks a lot of tackles. Mike Adam, Lee, I know he's going to talk a little bit about this. He was fine running back at Northwestern in the Big Ten, but Tim Akabatuka breaks tackles. Good pressure by Eddie Jasper, the nose man. He can't make the tackle. Reggie Brown, 46, bounces off. It's good, strong running effort by Tim Akabatuka. First time that he has really gotten loose tonight. A gain of 12 with his first down at the Aggie 19. The Akabatuka again this time going to be wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. And let's check in with Mike Adamley. Mike? Yeah, you know, yesterday, Ron and Mike, I was talking to a couple of former Michigan greats, uh, running back Fritz Seifert and also tight end Jim Manage. They said that in all their years at Michigan and Washington playing there, they had never seen a performance quite like that. And I must admit, I hadn't either. I was watching the Ohio State tape twice last week, and I stopped counting the number of Tim Biakabatuka broken tackles at about 50. It's something that will track all through the evening, but he is very special in that department. Second down and 11. He actually lost one of them by a foot. Campbell in motion. Blitz from the outside. Greasy loses the football. That's alive. And I think Michigan has recovered at the 26-yard line. Larry Walker is the man who took him down. When you especially get inside the 30-yard line against a &M, you better make sure your protection is going to hold up because they're going to bring the kitchen sink after your quarterback. Brian Greasy trying to set up here. Never has a chance. Too much pressure. Larry Walker, 32. Reggie Brown, 46. Hitting the quarterback before he can throw. Michigan extremely fortunate to, uh, to get that football back. Texas A&M has made a switch to. They're putting Ray Nickens on the Monty Tuma. That now means Mercury Hayes against McMullen. Third down. They need running play. Bianca Batuka runs over his own man. 20 at the 15 and down to the 11-yard line. And Michigan got away with the tackle on Ray Mickens. Mickens is running to the official. He got tackled by Amani Toomer at the 25-yard line. Well, I don't know if he got tackled, but he went he was knocked down by Amani Toomer. And that allowed Tim Biakabatuka to get outside. Once your corner's down in the support, RC Slocum is really complaining about it, Ron. But you're going to see Tim Biakabatuka get outside. You can't see Toomer on that play block. Ray Mickens. But Dennis Allen and Reggie Brown are down for Texas A&M. Two players. Here's the block by Amani Toomer against Ray Mickens. I'd say he's got his left hand on his jersey. I'd say that's a three count. That's a fall. <laughs> Here's the injury to Reggie Brown, number 46. Got taken out by his own teammate. Phil Bennett looking on. It is fourth down for Michigan. Meanwhile, the line of scrimmage is the 11-yard line, and they need the nine. They have not made any move for the yes, special team. Right? Allen up and coming off the field on his own power and now we see the kicking unit coming up. Hamilton will be attempting this one from in the vicinity of 28 yards. Grimmith Ma is the holder. So let's take a break. 11.15 left until halftime, and we are tied at 10. We'll be right back. Adam Lee coming to you from San Antonio, Texas, the Builder Square Alamo Bowl. Just what we expected. Another good tight ball game between team from the Big Ten and the team from the Southwest Jake Conference. And uh, they have their faithful here in great numbers. So far, everybody's getting their money's worth, too. Ten apiece. Keeping the kick it off. Well, these both kickers, well, he starts to come out of the end zone and then does not. Both of these kickers have done an excellent job in their kickoff tonight. 
By the way, don't forget, Thrifty Car Rental Bowlby continues tomorrow with a triple header. 1 o'clock, going to start with the Jim Walter Holmes Heritage Bowl. Florida A&M and Southern University. And at 5.30, the Blue and Weed Eater Independence Bowl, Michigan State and LSU. And then it's the Plymouth Holiday Bowl, Kansas State and Colorado State. All tomorrow, right here on ESPN. R.C. Slocum probably saying to his young wide receiver, Connell, you gave me heart failure when you started to come out of the end zone five yards deep because Michigan is an excellent cover team on their special teams. Bernard, he gets tattooed by David Bowens at the line of scrimmage. David is a freshman out of Pontiac, Michigan, 6'3", 228. He's the first freshman to start at Michigan since Rick Leach in 1975 out of Orchard Lake St. Mary's High School. And his linebacker coach, Coach Herman, told him when he was on the shoot team, he said, I'm going to call you at 12.01 the first time I can call you on a Thursday night. And that impressed him so much, he said, I'm going to Michigan. If you think that much of me, he probably made about 10 other calls at 12.01. <laughs> Sanders. I think he's going to have the first down on that uh, second effort. Reminding you, if you have just joined us on the telecast, Charles Woodson, the freshman sensation for Michigan, injured in the first quarter. The injury was to his knee, and he had to be carted off the field. We don't expect to see him back tonight, which means if you see a number 30, Andre Weathers, he is the man replacing him. Andre is a freshman out of Flint, Michigan. Good penetration by the Michigan defense, but Hardeman gets away and takes it over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Clarence Thompson and Jason Horn combine on the stop. Missed tackles by Michigan. They get good penetration. Jared Irons, number 37, missing the tackle. And that's not like him. He wraps up and makes tackles for this Michigan defense. Sanders in motion. But it's Bernard in the handoff. That's a good open field stop. 96, William Carr comes over to make the tackle. Interesting you talk about uh, Irons. He was one of the guests of the uh, players that we interviewed yesterday at the luncheon. And, of course, he's coming back home to play. Grew up in the Woodlands, Texas, which is just north of Houston. He said he didn't know how many people were coming over as far as carloads from, from the Woodlands to see him play. But he went to McCullough High School there. And, of course, his dad was a great player in the National Football League. And when he, when he was asked yesterday about the pros, he said, I'm just a junior. I, I don't want to think or talk about that right now. But don't you know that the Michigan people hope he maintains that, that way of thinking? Harper at a tailback. He'll get the handoff. And a tough one yard, and that's about it. As Jason Horn makes the stop. Ron, to add to that Jared Irons thing, after his first year, he was thinking about leaving and going to Texas A&M of all places. He was Parker riding in his car and had, with his mom sword. and dad, and he's telling them, I think I'm going to leave. And his dad told him, he said, I agree with you. If you're not going to play as a freshman, maybe you need to think about leaving. But his mom said, hey, Lord has you here in Michigan for a purpose and a reason you're staying. So mom won out, and he's now the captain of this Michigan football team. So a nice story. Yep, and it really is. They just have stopped Texas A&M by inches. R.C. Slocum can't take a chance this deep in his own territory, so Sean Terry is on to kick it away for the Aggies. Oh, this is his best kick of the night. All the way back to the nine-yard line. Mercury Hayes spins, gets away from one, and now he's going to be tackled at the eight-yard line. 51 yards in the kick and one on the return, and it's Marcus Ray who got down there to bring him down. Just a moment ago, we saw big William Carr make an important tackle for the Michigan club. He, too, as we mentioned, is from the state of Texas. He's from Dallas. His head coach says that they had to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. In fact, it was Carr who said, probably he has helped me out a bunch because 
He said, I get a little wild from time to time. And one of the first things that Lloyd Carr did when he took over as head coach is Carr went into his office and he told him he was going to have to abide for the straight and narrow or he was out of it. Obviously, he has done what his head coach asked him to do. The Akabatuka. 12, maybe the 13-yard line. Brandon Mitchell is there defensively for Texas A&M. Amani Summers had his way the first half, but now they've moved over Ray Mickens, who's 5'8", working against Amani Tumor. And when Phil Bennett told Ray Mickens he was going to line him up on Mercury Hayes, he was disappointed. He said, give me Amani Tumor. I want the best. He said, don't be worrying about my size. I'll stand in there with him. <laughs> it's going to be motion because the clock still had two seconds on it when it was snapped the other thing that they have done Mike is uh, Andre Williams a junior out of Sherman Texas has replaced Dead McMullen ball. at that cornerback ball spot. start offense five yard penalty second down what's well, a tough thing to ask Typho McMullen to move from safety to a corner they had to do it because of an injury and all of a sudden have to line up against two of the best receivers in the country Amani Tumor and Mercury Hayes it's going to be an interesting matchup, Mickens versus Tumor. Mickens really competitive. Michael Adams, the receiver from Texas, said he's the best pure cover guy I've ever played against. Talking about Mickens. Second down, and now it's going to be 12 following the, the five-yard penalty. Mixed up in the play. Greasy's going to have to run it. Boy. He makes it to the nine-yard line as that win will make the stop on him. But blow went left. He reversed out to the right, and that's that's really dangerous. That's how you get your quarterback hurt. That's a surprise. I, I don't know whether uh, it looks like Brian Greasy went the wrong way because both the linemen were pulling to the left, so it's bust by the quarterback. And, of course, he has to pay the price. That win making the tackle. see those middle backers creeping up and here they come. Greasy got by one. Now he's got a man wide open. Reimersmar and hit in the open field. Tries to fight forward for the first down and Mike he's 6'6". Six, six. But I think he needed to be about 6'8 because that's how much he missed it. He's a basketball player but Shun Horn really number 21 stayed with this play and made that tackle and saved the first down. That was Mickens they were sending off the corner, Mike. Brought him off the corner trying to pressure. I said before, Phil Bennett will bring the kitchen sink here trying to shake up Brian Greasy. But Brian Greasy's played very well in this first half. Wade Mickens goes back in a deep safety. This is a returnable kick. Line drive to the 46. Gets by one, two, three. He's off and running. He's one block. And Michigan will double-team him at the 28. It's Mark Campbell who gets the stop. 36 on the return on the kick. And 27 on the return. And that's what happens when you line drive kick it. Well, you talk about big plays. Sun Horn, number 21, the defensive back. Keeping Michigan from getting that first down, turning field position in AM's favor. Ray Mickens on the return. You always like your punt returner to make the first one miss. Get to the wall. Ray Mickens gets good blocking. Gets inside the 30-yard line. Great field position. Counter play. Great defense as he is hit in the backfield. Ball is loose. Michigan covered at the 28-yard line. Ron, that's the one disadvantage of losing to Leland McElroy. Not that he couldn't fumble in a ball game, but you're talking about three freshman running backs playing in this ball game. They make some type of mistake. Sir Parker coughs it up in Michigan now with a big defensive play. Ben Steele. I think Huff is the man who hit him and caused the ball to go loose. R.C. Slocum talks to his uh, freshman after the turnover. So Michigan dodges a giant missile there as 
They had given up the big punt return, but they got it back at the 28. We have 5-14 left until half time. Blitz again. Diaco Batista hit in the backfield. Check it. Clarence Williams is the man who got the handoff. Yeah, hit in the backfield and knocked down for a loss by Reggie Brown. Not much running room on first down for Texas or for uh, Michigan against this Texas a and defense. They're bringing him. Here comes number nine, Dat Win, the linebacker, just trying to outnumber the offensive line. Making the running game very, very difficult. Pressure's on Brian Greasy to, to really win this football game with his passing. Mike Chris Floyd started on the field and then they called him back. Clarence Williams, the lone setback. Two tights, two wide receivers. Williams takes it up the middle, has five yards and close to ten as he will take it across the 35 and Brandon Mitchell finally stops him. Credit the offensive line of Michigan, Jansen and Marinero picked up the blitz on this play and Clarence Williams was able to fit inside on the draw play. You know, that win has made several stops tonight as you look at Bianca Batuta on the sideline. Trent Driver was the starter at that linebacker spot. Win simply beat him out. The driver was going to play a lot in this ball game this evening. So look for number 28 as well. Williams, he tried to slide it outside, and there's not much there. He's not going to have the first down. Solid outside containment, and Michigan will have to punt it away. Dennis Allen defensively. When you look at this play, Texas A&M, a good defensive call by Phil Bennett because they've got nine people around the line of scrimmage figuring that Michigan's going to run. Dennis Allen, number 39, comes from the outside. There was no place for Clarence Williams to run. I know it's tied at 10 apiece, but folks, we have seen some really hard-hitting good defense in this first half tonight. Pressure right up the middle. Gets it away, and this his best kick of the night. Mickens for the 14. And he'll get out of bounds just shy of the 25. 49 yards on the kick and 10 on the return. We'll be right back to San Antonio. Builder Square Alamo Bowl, San Antonio, Texas, about 500 yards from here, the famous landmark, the Alamo. And here inside the dome, not quite filled, but close to 65,000 on hand. Eric Bernard has come to the tailback, replacing Sir Parker. Quick screen out in the flat. Got a blocker in front. That's Connell. And let's go downstairs and check with Mike Adamley. Mike. What makes, a good, what makes a good football player, Ron? Well, intelligence, toughness, and genetics doesn't hurt either. For 10 fine seasons in the National Football League, he was one of the best linebackers. His name is Gerald Irons, but tonight he's a proud papa, and you've got to feel ecstatic. Thank you, Mike. I do. I'm just happy for Jared. Jared has been ill all week with the flu, and he wasn't able to eat on Christmas. In the next three days, he wasn't able to eat any food. But uh, we came here on Christmas morning, we spent the day with him, and we sort of nursed him back to, to health, if you will. And today, he came to play, as always, and uh, he's having a fine game tonight. Better football player than you? Well, I tell you, he had better be. All three of my boys have the potential to be. And uh, the good thing about it as a parent, I'm glad that they all listen to me when I give them instruction and we work out together. So it's, it's a joy being their father, and uh, we have three great kids. Well, thanks for joining us, and I know your other son, Grant, is up there. Ron and Mike, he is six foot six inches tall and just a junior. And Gerald says he's a Michigan man as well. Yeah, I tell you, he's looking at a lot of different schools, but uh, Michigan has a special place in his heart. Okay. Happy holidays. Thanks, Gerald. Appreciate it. That's Mike Adamley. That ball is batted down. It was a forward pass. And just as we talk about the Irons family, it was Jared who knocked it down. It's a proud father. Should be. Uh, should be. And, uh, his, his young man, along with uh, Corey Pullock, and uh, and Reggie Brown were the youngsters who were on stage yesterday, and they really handled themselves extremely well. Jared Irons just running through the block of Chris Ruman, number 76, to deflect that football. Well, that's that Gerald said we all work out together. He looks like he's still working out. His dad looks like he can play right <laughs> that's now. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he looks like he works out with him. Parker and Hardeman in the backfield. Second down and 10. 
Michigan shows corner blitz, and here they come. And they throw the middle screen column, and that's the right call for what Michigan had going. And Connell will take it for the first down almost at midfield. Losing Leland McElroy tonight, Texas A&M's offensive coordinator Steve Emslinger has just done a great job of moving this ball against this Michigan defense. He's kept Michigan off balance. Good call here, the corner blitz, and he throws the screen to Albert Connell, number 80, and picks up good blocks in the first down. King makes the stop. Michigan has called a timeout, so we'll take it with him. 149 left until halftime. We'll be right back. A new source of savings arrives out of the blue. Launching a new alliance between Western Pacific Airlines and Thrifty Car Rental will bring more of what travelers want above all. Low rates. Making Thrifty and Western Pacific birds of a feather. For car rental reservations, call your professional travel agent or 1-800-4-CARS. Your neighborhood thrifty car rental. Historically, Michigan locked up at 10 apiece just before halftime. Steve Ensminger is the offensive coordinator for Texas A&M. And one of the things, Mike, Albert Connell, I mentioned in the intro tonight of the players, he's their go-to guy, I and mean, he's their big play man. It almost took them 27 and a half minutes to find out how they how to get him the football but they got to don't they? Okay, they have to get him the ball but i tell you this has been a magnificent game plan against a very good defense here in the first half well, it, ball is tipped and it is caught unbelievably so by parker and boy he tried to put touch on that ball and he had pressure in his face from rashid simmons that very dangerous because it could have been intercepted lucky for corey pulley that it wasn't picked off Check Jason it. Horn, Jason number Horn. 94, yeah. deflects it. Sir Parker stayed with the ball to make the reception. Michigan shows blitz, and here they come. Pull it. Lucky that he was rolling the pocket. Had a man wide open and just overthrew Aaron Oliver. We've seen talk pass, about good game plans, and Steve Emslinger knows Michigan likes to come off the short side of the field with the corner blitz. So what does he do? He calls a roll out to the right. Now, it was a good call because he was able to get Corey Pulley. If, that's, if he was standing back in the pocket, he'd get hit and maybe fumbled. But a nice call again, expecting Michigan to do just what they did. Everything worked except Corey let it fly on him a little bit. Bad snap. Started the play. Busted from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Third down. They need the Michigan 41. 117 left until halftime. Corner blitz on the other side. Pass over the middle. It is caught by Sanders. Sanders in double traffic. Brought it down. DeAndre Hardeman, the freshman back, made a good block. You're going to see Sanders go right down the middle against two deep coverage. Corey Pulley right on the money. And Mike immediately, free safety Chuck Winters, number 35, went running off the field. He was injured on that mid-air collision. Good throw by Corey Pulley. There wasn't a lot of room to fit that ball in, but he did put it in. So we'll get a report on winners, but he went running right off the field. And we'll check more on him. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike. Okay, Ron, our college football studio for Bowl Week, as everyone knows, is in Tempe, site of the national championship game. Coming up at halftime, well, baseball news. Reigns moving from Chicago to New York. We'll have the details on that. Chris Doring and Danny Werfel, the Gator great combo, join us live here at our set. And we'll preview some of the other bowl games. Chris, Lee, and Craig, join me for the new Dodge halftime report in a little bit. See you then, Ron. Okay, Michael, we appreciate it. Down here in San Antonio, it has been a great week. A lot of folks from Michigan and a lot of people from Texas A&M journeying in the last few days. And I was handed this just before uh, we kicked off tonight that the temperature here in the Alamo Dome or outside was like mid-60s, and I was told it was sunny and 29 in Ann Arbor. Spring, late this afternoon. Spring day back in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> These Michigan kids have had a good time down here uh, visiting in the state of Texas. First down, they roll the pocket, shovel pass right up the middle. That's Parker, and he will take it to the 20-yard line. Now we have to keep an eye on the clock. 103, 102, and a marking down. Pulling 
looks down at his rich wristband. Going for the end zone. Got a man there and knocked away, and he just floated it too much. Marcus Ray knocked it away because Michigan realized they had gotten somebody behind him. Marcus Ray had a chance to intercept this ball. You see, you're right, it was a floater out there for Corey Pulley, but just couldn't make the play. Albert Connell really became a defensive player on that pass. Albert Connell, number 80, going up for the ball. Marcus Ray, good coverage by Michigan. I have a feeling that just knocked the wind out of him. You can see the way he came down on his shoulders. He's upside down almost. Gets bumped in the back of the head, but then goes down hard. We're coming up later tonight on ESPN. The Rainbow Classic continues from Honolulu, Hawaii, with number one, Massachusetts. And, of course, that means Marcus Camby and company against the Wolfpack of NC State. Syracuse and Rhode Island have already advanced to the semis with victories yesterday. We'll have both semifinals for you tomorrow night, beginning at 10 on ESPN2, plus the final on Sunday on ESPN. You know, Ron, when you look at, uh, since we have a break here, you look at college basketball, I think the the college uh, basketball coaches are rewarded for tough schedules because of the computer rankings and the tournament at the end of the year. Football teams are not rewarded. They're, the easy schedules are rewarded because if you lose a game in college football, you're out of it. I mean, every week becomes a, a playoff in the regular season. And if you had the playoff, a team like Tennessee, uh, Ohio State, uh, they'd still be alive with something to play for for the title. So I think really it's... Uh, Again, we only you know, beat a dead horse, but uh, if you had a playoff situation, you could afford one bad week in That's a football right. season and come back and still win the national title. Happy to report that Connell is up and coming off on his own. you got to look at McElroy on the sideline. In the case you have not been with us through the first half, the All-American tailback for Texas A&M sidelined when he re-injured his ankle and unable to go in this one tonight. His third down, Texas AM. They need the ball to the 16 yard line for a first down. He has 41 seconds left till halftime. Pressure from Michigan loses the ball, and the big thing about that play is the fact that they just took him out of field goal range. David, David Bowen. David Bowen, the freshman starter from Orchard Lake St. Mary's High School, made the play. He was not fooled by the misdirection play by Corey Pulling. You know, I may have spoken too quickly because when I look back at my notes, Kyle Bryant does have a 61-yard field goal to his credit. So let's back it up here. Six yards from where they are, seven yards. That would be, yeah, be about a 49-yard attempt if they go for it. And the Aggies are going to think it over. They have called a timeout. I think they'll go for the field goal run. I think what R.C. Trotham is going to do one of two things. He let the clock run down to four seconds so that if there is something happens on this play, Michigan doesn't have any time. So you're either going to kick the field goal or throw the ball to the end zone, one of the two plays. Corey Pulling lost that football for a second, and it bounced a true bounce right back up into his hands. The new Dodge Halftime Report with Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, and Craig James from the Fiesta Bowl in Tempe. Temple's next victim, Florida Connection, and also the Bowl Blitz. That and more coming up on the new Dodge Halftime Report. And there's a look at Kyle Bryant, a sophomore, from right there in College Station, 5'7", 180 pounds. always amazed me about football but nobody gets close to the kicker nobody talks to him they don't even look at him they'll talk to him if he makes it <laughs> this is going to be a 50 yard attempt they are taking hey, about an eight yard, yard drop rather than a seven yard drop i guess because of the trajectory on such a long field goal attempt and the conditions are right to make this one ball is down and he has the distance he got it with about eight or ten yards to spare. It is halftime with our score. Texas A&M 13 and Michigan 10. Now, the new Dodge halftime report. Here's Mike Tirico. Mike? 
Ron, Mike, and Mike, thank you. Excellent first half. But visitors can discover San Antonio's beauty any time of the year, where it offers a complete year-round vacation experience. Located in the heart of Texas, with easy highway and air accessibility, this Sunbelt City enjoys more than 300 days of sunshine a year and an average temperature of 68 degrees. 18th century Spanish missionaries settled the area, and this rich heritage is depicted in each of the five remarkably preserved Spanish missions. The most well-known mission, the Alamo, embodies Texas' quest for independence from Mexico. Just a short stroll from the Alamo, the Riverwalk welcomes guests to a cool midtown oasis. This two-and-a-half-mile stretch along the San Antonio River features prime hotels and fanciful shops, as well as lively cafes and superb restaurants. Nearby Market Square unfurls a colorful display of Mexico, while in historic La Vieta, artisans exhibit and sell their wares. But San Antonio's attractions are not limited to downtown. Just north of the central city, the San Antonio Zoo in Brackenridge Park is home to a wonderful menagerie of animals. Fiesta Texas theme park celebrates the heritage of San Antonio and South Texas. Four theme areas feature live shows, ethnic food, and rides. Nearby SeaWorld of Texas introduces fascinating marine creatures and thrills guests with exciting water rides and action-packed shows. Arts enthusiasts will discover several world-class museums, many galleries, and music stage productions at the Majestic Theater. A sampling of San Antonio's events include the Livestock Show and Rodeo in February, Fiesta San Antonio in April, Juneteenth, the Texas Folklife Festival in August, and the Seis de Septiembre in September. Sports fans will find San Antonio a mecca with Spurs NBA basketball, the Canadian Football League, baseball, and professional hockey. The Alamo Dome will play host to the 1996 NBA All-Star Game and the 1998 NCAA Final Four Tournament. San Antonio, a culturally diverse and friendly vacation destination. San Antonio, something to remember. Halftime, Texas A&M leading Michigan by a score of 13 to 10. And Mike Gottfried, you have to say in the first half, special teams for A&M led the way. 10 of the 13 points. The punt by Terry out at the 7. They fumbled on the next play. They get it at the 5. And then a 49-yard field goal by Bryant. You're right, Ron. And they did exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to stop Tim Biak Matuka taking out of the running game. Here's the turnover on the uh, first play when he fumbles the football. A&M was able to take that in and make a touchdown. Here's Chris Bernard behind good blocking. Freshman running back to get into the touchdown. Chris Sanders with the block. Monty Toomer had a good matchup in the first half, and he took advantage of it with two big catches. But then A&M switched Ray Mickens on the Monty Toomer. And Ron, Michigan has only thrown five passes. I think for them to be successful and win this game, they've got to throw in first down here in the second half. Well, we'll see if they come up with that as Tumor and Hayes go back to twin safeties and Bryant, who nailed that 49-yard field goal just before halftime, about to kick it off. Squibber this time. Mercury Hayes from the two. Wait for his blocker. 20-25. Take a look at the stats from the first half. And Mike, as even as this ball game is... So are the stats. It shows you how very close that these two teams have played in the first half. Now, A&M with a wider margin as far as number of plays, but when you look at yardage, 47 and 66 rushing, 89 and 72, which comes out to a total of only two yards different, 138 and 136. Two most important stats there. A&M's field position starting on the 44, and the turnover, they turned into seven points. There's going to be a turnover in this quarter, Rod. Third quarter, fourth quarter, it's going to turn this game all around either way. Play action as a flag goes down, and he's looking for Mercury Hayes. Couldn't hold on. Looked as though it went right through his arms, and now let's go back to the line of scrimmage and see what the flag is about. It was Andre Williams on the cover. It's on a and Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, previous spot. First down. I like the call on first down, Ron, because they're throwing the ball and throwing deep. Now they're working Mercury Hayes against the other corner, Andre Williams. But that shows you the tremendous respect they have for Ray Mickens. They're going away from Imani Toomer. Once they made that switch of Ray Mickens on Imani Toomer, he's completely taking him out of the football game. 
Ty Streets has come to the ball game, and Hayes gets a breather after that long run. He's number 86. Jakob Atuka runs into his own blocker. You can see him fighting his way close to the 35, which is almost first Jakob down Atuka land. Reggie Brown and Sean Horn combining in the stop for A&M, and it'll be second down and short. You know, Ron, you, you, you think the question, a lot of people may think, as you look at Tim Jakob Atuka's stats tonight, 34 yards, why isn't Michigan throwing the ball a little bit more? There's a protection question, too. You, you don't want to get Brian Greasy hit in the back and he fumbles the football, and then all of a sudden AM's got seven points. So that's the concern they have against this AM defense. Second and short play action. They're going to throw this one. Near side has it complete. That's Mercury Hayes out across the 45 to the 48 yard line. I'm impressed with Brian Greasy tonight. Uh, he's on the money again to Mercury Hayes. Mercury Hayes makes this reception. A good call here. Short yardage by Fred Jackson. Throwing the ball outside a little bit more. Good blocking. Mercury Hayes with a good route in front of Andre Williams. So it looks like they're going to try to pick on Andre Williams. Number 26, the corner away from Ray Mickens. Second half with Mercury Hayes. 14 yards on that play. Steps up into the pocket, and he just overthrows this one by a great distance. Schumer is the man that he wanted, and now here comes the flag, and that, well, we'll wait and see. Could not have been a catchable ball unless they're going to call holding. That could be the call against Ray Mickens. For Schumer, flag on the play. Now Mickens comes sprinting downfield to, to say something to Gentry and company. That ball was overthrown by 15 yards, so holding was the only thing you could suspect. Now nope, he's putting the flag in his hand. This no is going to play. The ball is unsensible. Take it out. You're right, Ron. The only call could have been holding on Ray Mickens. He's running stride for stride with Amani Toomer. It's his hands on Amani Toomer. I think that's pretty good coverage. A lot of respect for Ray Mickens, the corner out of AM. Second down, the line of scrimmage is the Michigan 49. Diaka Batuka. Penetration up the middle, inside the 45, and he's down to the 44. That win. There to make the tackle. Win is an interesting youngster. Red shirt freshman out of Rockport. Vietnamese parents and the, the Michigan coaching staff said readily, we looked at video on him and we tried to recruit him. In fact, Lloyd Carr paid him the best compliment that you can pay somebody. He said, it looked like a highlight video that I looked at. He said, I've never seen a linebacker in high school be so many places at one time. He said it was one hit after another. Hit just as the ball has gotten away and it's incomplete as Greasy had a lot of pressure on him as he got the pass away. And it's going to be fourth down for Michigan. Keith Mitchell again with the pressure, and he said, when we're in need of a big play, I want to deliver. And real good pressure. What they're trying to do with the Keith Mitchell, the outside backer, is make Michigan block him with their tailback, Tim Biakabatuka. They feel like he has an advantage at 6'3", 223, and he just ran over Tim Biakabatuka. Harris Harris back to punt. So Michigan lets some really good field position get by them. Aims it for the corner. Very, very high kick. Mickens runs away from it, and now Michigan is going to be able to down it inside the 10-yard line. 34 yards in the kick, but AM will be scrimmaging from around the 9-yard line. Well, you mentioned the fact that the McElroy not able to play tonight. And these are the three freshman replacements, all playing in high school this time last year. And you see their numbers in the first half of the ball game. Parker, Hardman, and Bernard. And Bernard scored that uh, first touchdown for Texas A&M. Actually, the only touchdown for Texas A&M. If you look at McElroy in the sideline. tries to bounce off a tackler. You know, Mike, during one of the timeouts, one of the things that we've talked about is these backs have so much 
God-given ability, Parker, Hardeman, and also Bernard. But one of the things you have to learn in college, particularly when you're not an oversized back, the longer you, you squiggle back and forth, Michigan has so many people around the football. That's what cost Parker that fumble back in the first half. You better just get what you can get and, <laughs> and get down. And it rolls the pass, it throws the pass, complete at the 26-yard line. That's Connell, number 80. Corey Pulley has delivered all evening. He hasn't made any mistakes, hasn't turned the ball over, and he's kept the chains moving, and he's taken the pressure off the freshman running backs by making the big play. Again, the big play to get the first down to keep the chains moving. And you look at his record, 32-6-1 as a starting quarterback. How can you question him? quarterback ever at Texas a &M. Parker to the other side. Great containment by Michigan, and he gets by. Breaks it into the open. It was a 36, close to a first down on that first down run. Glenn Steele, who's been going in and out of this ball game because of back problems, he's out there to make the tackle. Well, Mike Sherman's the offensive line coach for Texas a Watch offensive linemen. They just keep a good base. Keep blocking, keep cutting behind. That's Derek Spiller, number 87 on David Bowen. They just stay with the Michigan defenders, and eventually Sir Parker finds the little seam and hits it. Well, that's good for 10 yards, and the chains move forward again. First down at the 37. Parker and Hardeman this time. Oliver, number one, in motion. Try to break the run with Parker. He will have five yards to the 42. Jared Iron from that Parker middle linebacker comes up to make the tackle. They had 66 yards rushing in the first half AM and come out in the second half and they're moving the ball on the ground. They've had success against this Michigan defense, which a lot of teams, except Penn State, Penn State had success on the ground. No one else did. AM doing a nice job of the offensive line. AM really trying to develop a pattern on this drive right here, and that is only one pass. But trying to keep it on the ground and run the football, as Mike said. Bernard in the ball game. He gets the handoff on the counter play. He slips down as he made his turn. And made his cut a little too steep. And it's going to be short of the 44. So it'll be third down. David Bowens is We're there for Michigan. Carry one down by Bowens. Michigan's defense needs some type of a big play. You look at a William Carr, Jason Horn, the outside backer, who when Will Carr, when we had him against Boston College, Will Carr was on the bench, and Jason Horn was a starter. The coaches talked to Jason Horn, moved outside, so William Carr could be the starting nose guard. Very unselfish. which is whatever it takes to win. That's what his coaches said. Short drop, got to go on top, and he's got Connell there, and he just overthrew it as they were faking a slam, and he ran it up. Woodrow Hankins is mugging Albert Connell down the field. The no call, again, not a catchable football. Woodrow Hankins, number 23, trying to hit the slant. Pushes off with his left hand. Got a hold of uh, Albert Connell, but uh, not a catchable throw. Sean Terry stands by to kick. Mr. Hayes back in a single safety. Good hanging spiral. He had a 51-yarder in the first half, and he calls and makes the fair catch at the 11-yard line. So 46 yards on that punt, and let's go away for a moment. Timeout on the field, 9.57 left in the third. definite reasons we created Ford Windstar to be the only minivan with available all-speed traction control and four-wheel anti-lock disc brakes. Reasons it has a wide stance for secure handling and also meets 1998 federal passenger car safety standards. We'd like to show you one more reason, but it's still a month or so away. Introducing the 1996 Ford Windstar, created for the most important people in the world.
Glidden, we know how hard it can be to find time to paint. That's why spread satin is formulated to cover the first time, so you can finish in less time. Glidden, a better way to paint. There's no better time to buy Glidden than now. So whether you need spread satin or spread enamel, pick up whatever you need at any Miller Square. ESPN's coverage of the Builder Square Alamo Bowl is presented by Builder Square. We'll get you squared away. And in part by the all-new Ford Windstar, the future of many bands begins today. Well, we mentioned earlier in the telecast, that is the famed old mission, the Alamo, about 500 yards from here in the, almost the heart of San Antonio. And it has had a lot of visitors this week as folks have come in from all over the state of Texas and from up in the, the Midwest. Our friends from Michigan have come down to support their ball club. This is the third worst field position for Michigan tonight, Mike. They've had it now at the 11, the 8, and the 10-yard line. And again, special teams playing a big part for Texas a and Flag down as Bianca Patuka is being forced out of bounds after a gain of two. And now let's see, I believe Texas a and was offside on the play, but let's see if uh, the officials agree with that. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, previous spot, first down. Ron, you make an excellent point about special teams because the mentality that gets into play calling against a blitzing team like Texas A&M is when you got the ball inside the 20, 25-yard line, you're just a little bit hesitant sometimes with your protection and a young quarterback to just turn it loose. But I think Michigan has to throw the football in first down. Fred Jackson is Mike, what he's talking about. He wants to protect his young quarterback as much as he can. The Akimakuka, look at that great cut back into the middle. He'll have the first down. He was headed right. And he just cut on a dime and took it out to the 22 as Dennis Allen finally stopped it. Good blocking by the Michigan left side of the offensive line. Because of the depth that Tim Biakvatuka is at, he's able to get the ball and make the cut back to the left side. Good vision by the and a solid running back. John Jansen, redshirt freshman out of Crossing, Michigan, number 77. A good look at him as they break the huddle and come out to a first down at the 22. The after the two, the blockers in front this time. Oh, he gets mauled by Warwick Holden. 43. It looked as though he was going to spin out from behind his blockers, and then he got taken down very hard. As good a running team as Michigan is, I don't think they can take the ball the length of the field yeah, running the football against the Texas a and defense. They don't. You've got to have big plays because they're gambling on you. They're, they're throwing the dice and they're saying, hey, we're going to put eight people up here. We're going to blitz. We're going to do some things to try to stop you. So it's a gamble with the big play. Are you going to get it or am I going to get it? Lloyd Carr said yesterday in our meeting, they blitz more than anybody we face far and away. Ball is loose on the ground. Michigan recovers at the seven-yard line. That was not a forward pass. It was a live ball. And that is exactly what Mike Gottfried was talking about as Remus Ma made the recovery. But Holden just took him apart. And without a doubt, see, first down's the best down to throw on a &M, But second down now, here comes the blitz. Warwick Holden, number 43, gets hit in the back also by Keith Mitchell, the outside linebacker. And that's the fear you have calling plays with a young quarterback. He's not going to recognize the blitz. I don't know what your tight end was doing that deep, but it's a good thing that he was back there behind the play. <laughs> he made a good recovery on this uh, ball because said before, I think there's going to be one big turnover. Go against one of these teams going to be the difference in the ball game. That was a loss of 17 yards. Gracie, hit, down at the two-yard line by Keith Mitchell. The way AM has devised their scheme is Tim Biakabatuka has to block Keith Mitchell. Keith Mitchell is overpowering the running back, overpowering the blocking scheme of Michigan. Great field position again coming up for AM. I'm a little surprised that Michigan went back to the well with a pass at this field position. Don Jansen was the tackle, was beat on that play. Didn't get any help from Tim Biakabatuka because they released him in the pattern. Paris Garris waits nine and a half yards deep in his end zone. Mickens is back deep for Texas a and It's returnable. 
from the 43. Nickham takes it to the 35-yard line. 41 yards in the kick and 8 on the return. And Andre Williams came very close again to blocking that kick. Michigan's got two problems on their punt team. One, they're getting close to getting one blocked. Two, they've got very poor coverage on the punt. Ray Mickens, you're going to see first of all, good pressure by a and almost getting the kick. Andre Williams, number 26. Now, after the kick, as Williams comes in, almost blocks it. Then poor coverage, Andre Mickens. It takes the counter tray. Pulling goes on top. Got a man there. Oh, and it went right through Chris Sanders' hand. He jumped, and the ball went through his hands and out by the midsection. Well, they picked on Andre Weathers, the backup. Charles Woodson, the freshman Big Ten Player of the Year, was hurt early in this ball game. Andre Weathers is the backup corner. Chris Sanders just runs a wheel route. Starts outside, then breaks up the field. Andre Weathers is beaten. That ball is just dropped by Chris Sanders. This is the third possession tonight that AM has started in Michigan territory. You remember the last time they had the good punt return. Sir Parker fumbled the ball back to Michigan. Oliver in motion. It's Parker. Left side, and he has five, and he gets hit down hard by Jared Irons. And now, a third down situation, and actually it's going to be closer to six for the first. You always wonder if the team, when they go to a bowl game, whether they're going to show up or not. Texas A&M is showing up tonight. They're playing with a lot of emotion in this ball game. When the a couple third down plays early in the ball game, they threw the shovel pass. Ron, it was open for them. Let's see if they go back to the shovel draw here. Line to make is the Michigan 24. Corner blitz is coming. They go the opposite way with the pitch. Parker has containment, dances around, and they're going to stop him at the 29 yard line. Steve King is the man who finally got him. Jason Horn, though, Mike, is the one who just would not go down with his block and made the play come back inside. And Jason Horn made that move outside so the Will Carr could play the middle guard. Plays this option perfectly, waits for the pitch, then sets up the back, and then gets pursued. Steve King, 27 on the tackle. And here's that man again, Kyle Bryant. This will be a 47-yard attempt. He nailed a 49-yarder in the first half with lots of distance to spare. See if he can do it again. Again, has plenty of distance, and he is good. So let's take a break. Off the foot of Kyle Bryant. The Aggies now with a 19-10 lead. We'll be right back. Where the thoughtful side? 25, 30, 35. He's off and running as a flag comes down. And we may have just had a holding call against Mercury Hayes back at the 35-yard line. 34 yards. Michigan, everything's going against them. Mercury Hayes, number nine. It's going to be called for a penalty. As soon as it happened, Andre Williams pointed at Hayes and said, they got you. Illegal, block in the back, 10 yards as far as foul. So, bottom line is, it's a six-yard gain for Michigan because it comes from the spot of the foul. So now the third down, and they need the 29. to pick up the first down. That is the call on Mercury Hayes against Andre Williams, number 26. Rod Payne, the junior out of Miami, Florida, number 52, comes out of the football as you look at Bianca Patuka. His ball club is down 16 to 10. They come with a reverse. Mercury Hayes to the left side. Has the first down and now looking for more as he'll take it across the 40-yard line. Ray Mickens made the tackle, but it's a game of 17. And Marinero with a very good block. Rod Payne also the center. Joe Marinero, they pulled out and led this play. Mercury Hayes, this is the play early in the ball game. They tried to run and hit a blitz by a and and it never unfolded. This time they caught the right defense. 
Mercury Hayes following the block of his lineman, Joe Marinero. Rod Payne gets outside for a first down. From the 42, Bianca Batuka straight ahead. Gets by one tackler, and he'll take it to the 45. What other note on Marinero? He's an offensive captain. And as I mentioned in the lineups, for the second time has been voted by his team as the most outstanding offensive lineman. Well, yesterday, as one of the captains, he too was at the luncheon. And as uh, I interviewed him, I asked him, he is from Andover, Massachusetts. And I asked his brother played at Boston College, why he didn't go to BC. And he just said that it was right that he become a Michigan man and that uh, he didn't make a mistake. Nothing against BC, but all the way from Andover, Massachusetts, he thinks he did the right thing. AM shows blitz and then they come off up. Greasy sets to throw and it is incomplete at the 37 yard line. Howard is the man they wanted that, or check it, Mercury Hayes is the man that they wanted. A lot of bumping again by Andre Williams, but I think again not a catchable football. And Michigan's receivers getting a little frustrated, Ron, that they're not getting the calls in the secondary. You get the man-to-man -man coverage a lot of times in the secondary. A lot of pushing going on. Michigan feels like they should be getting some calls. Jay Reimers uh, has been quietly absent from this offensive attack tonight. No zero catches. So no, he had one catch. Really the ball game. Country just asked both sidelines to move back. They were getting too close to the field. Howard in at the running back spot. Greasy gets the pass away as the flag comes down. Walker with the pass rush, and it was intended for Toomer. Michigan's going to get this Flag on the play. Michigan has to do. This is what you got on the outside. Amani Toomer versus Ray Mickens. And you see just the grabbing and pulling down Amani Toomer. Ray Mickens gets the call going against him. Again, you have to remember, Amani Toomer is 6'4". Ray Mickens is 5'8". He's given up a lot of height in that matchup. First down. 40 yard line. Yaka Batuka. Gets the tackle at the line of scrimmage, has five, has ten, and is going to be spot out of bounds at the 28-yard line by Sean Horn. He looks to me, Tim Bianca Batuka, like he's coming alive, and he wants the football. Passing game is opening him up a little bit here on the counter. Go back to Texas, game plan against Texas A&M. The second half, they had a lot of success running the football against this a and defense. They had 28 yards rushing in the first half. In the second half, they just stayed with it and had 240 yards rushing. So Michigan trying to copy that game plan. 86 yards now on 19 to 10. And then leads by six to Michigan driving with 328 left in the third quarter. Clarence Williams gets by one tackler and he'll take it down to the 24-yard line. Coming up Sunday night on ESPN2, ringing the new year with the NASCAR Marathon. 30 hours of the best short track and super speedway excitement from the 1995 season. And it all begins New Year's Eve, 8.30 Eastern Time. Keeps going all day and all night long on January the 1st. The NASCAR Marathon on ESPN2. High street, number 86, in the ball game with wide receiver. Williams continues to work the tailback, and he gets the handoff. Tries to bounce it outside, breaks the tackle, and he's going to have the first down. And Mike Godfrey going to make the point. Normally, fatigue starts to cause missed tackles. And A&M on this series right here has missed more tackles than they have the rest of the ball game. And you remember the layoff. Of the, the, the good teams are good fundamentally. They tackle every day. And when you get to a bowl game and you have a layoff, sometimes you cut your workouts back a little bit, don't tackle as much, and it starts to show a little bit when you get tired. Well, A&M can't lose anybody out of the secondary because 
they have already lost the starter and Donovan Greer. With Dennis Allen, the starter at free safety, is still down on the far side of the field and is shaken up. Second time that he's been injured tonight. Still going to be tough for Michigan to get that ball in the end zone because you're one play and you need a big play because consistently a and going to throw the dice again, try to come back with... Keith Mitchell, the outside linebacker, one side, Reggie Brown, the other side, try to put pressure on this Michigan offense. So there's a timeout on the field, and we'll take it with him. 2.45 left in the third. We'll be right back. As a &M leads, substitution in the backfield, replacing Dennis Allen, number five. He's a true freshman out of Refugio, Texas, Toya Jones. And Mike, he is a world-class sprinter. In fact, uh, he went over to Spain and spent time working last year. Has a real good possibility of being on the U.S. Olympic team, either in uh, the relays or on his own in sprint competition. Clarence Williams, the setback, and a first and ten at the a &M 15-yard line. Tries to bounce it outside, and he does. Blocker in front at the 10, at the 5, and will be knocked down just short of the 5-yard line. And you could see John Runyon, number 69, the big junior who is a first-team All-Big Ten at tackle, and he was out in front on the play. We talk about Toyo Jones being a sprinter, but all of a sudden he's looking at 6'8", 299. John Runyon, he'd like to sprint away from him, but he's just taking him on. Clarence Williams inside the six-yard line. But, Ron, this drive started from the 19-yard line. Very good drive by Fred Jackson, the offensive coordinator. Good play call. Still have to get that ball in the end zone. It's a very tough defense. Tenth play of this drive. Yakubatuka. Hit at the four. And it's just about the end of the way for him. And I believe, yep, from where the linesman has marked it, he's going to have the first down, doesn't he? Close. Eddie Jasper, the nose guard, really had a shot at making this play in the backfield, but Yakubatuka's strength and cutback ability made the play. We have just been told that Dennis Allen has sprained his ankle. He's out for the game. So Donovan Greer is already out with uh, an injury to his ACL. Now we're told that Allen injured his knee rather than his ankle. A&M running out of defensive back. First and goal, Michigan. Line of scrimmage, the four-yard line. Gracie wants to throw. And he just throws it away. Reimers Meyer was the closest man to it. What you have to do as a quarterback on this play when your receivers are covered like that, it's almost got to be a run by the quarterback, Brian Gracie, but he elected to throw the ball out of the end zone to get to second down. Normally, it develops a little bit quicker than that. If it doesn't, there's nobody open. No, right? It was slow, and the back didn't get out in the flat. It collided with the defense again. Just nothing there, but Brian Greasy has to run that. Here comes a with the play. To Bianca Pachuca, going to be stopped at the nine-yard line. You get tendencies sometimes, but AM was playing the counter all the way. Pressure up the field by Jasper again, 95. Pat Williams, 99, and they came up with a big play. Now Michigan has a little more room, so to speak, as it is third down and nine. And you look at Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M. Across the way, Fred Jackson, who used to be his counterpart at Purdue, has dialed up a play with a third and goal. Let's see the results. Greasy hit from behind, gets away, throws to the end zone, and it's overthrown. Remus Mize, who he wanted. Keith Mitchell... For the world, looks as though he had him, he missed him. They, they can't block Keith Mitchell. Keith Mitchell's too quick for the big tackles of Michigan. John Runyon and John Jansen. Top of the screen, number 23, just runs by John Runyon and is able to get in on Brian Greasy. Lucky they didn't cause a fumble again. Brian Greasy throws the football away. Brian in the first half was 4 of 5. In the second half, only 1 of 7. As Hamilton goes for the field goal, Remus Marta hold at the 16. He 
nails the 26-yarder. So we're back to a field goal difference with 33 seconds left in the third quarter. And this Builder Square Alamo Bowl continues to be a rough and tumble tight one. Well, do we start thinking a little bit here about the tiebreaker? Because we do have tiebreakers now in Division One in bowls. And we had the first We history. had the first one. We had history in Nevada. Toledo and Nevada, in case you missed that one, they were tied at 34 at the end of regulation. By the way, over 1,000 total yards in regulation. And Toledo wound up, and, and credit to those people, that they wind up one of the three undefeated teams in Division I this year because they won it. And what happens is you put it at the 25-yard line after a coin toss. You either take offense or you take defense. You get it at the 25 and you score in the field goal or touchdown. Then the other team has to come back and either equal or beat what you did. If they tie, you both get a field goal or both get a touchdown. You come back to the 25 and you start all over again. And Chris Alt's Nevada team got the ball first in that game, kicked, had not forced to kick a field goal. Then Gary Pinko's Toledo team uh, just ran the ball in and they won the game and stayed undefeated. So uh, may we have a second one? Could have. Most coaches, though, would like to go on defense first in that sudden day. Here's Feely's kick. Boy, these kickers have done a great job tonight on both sides. Harvard Bowl Week continues tomorrow, 5 o'clock. Bullig comes on with his offensive unit at the 20-yard line. His club leading 16-13. to 13. We have 33 seconds left in the third quarter. <laughs> Big banner that had to have come out of the Woodlands, Texas for Jared Irons. will take it for three, maybe four yards, and that could be the final play of this third quarter. Brought down by Irons and Steele. Yeah, in fact, it's under 25 seconds when they whistle it in. And let's see if the Aggies are interested in running another play or if they will just casually let it run down. 12, 11, and 10. They did not get it off. So that is the end of the third quarter. And as we head to the final 15, our score, Texas A&M 16 and Michigan 13. Sixteen to thirteen, Texas A&M leading over Michigan as the Aggie Warham goes in the background. And Mike, a couple of numbers that are interesting. A&M only had the ball 507. Michigan dominated 953 possession time. And as a result, a and only had 39 third-quarter yards. Hard to measure. Out of the 40 to the 42-yard line. That is 19 yards, and Leland McElroy liked what he saw from the young freshman out of Galena Park, Texas. Good play call again by Steve Emslinger because Michigan rushing up the field. Hardeman didn't really even get a block by his lead block, and there's just nobody there to tackle him. Steve King makes the tackle, but Steve Emslinger knows he has to get some points, more points on the board. Chris Sanders downfield, number seven with the block. Also makes it difficult when you got both of those youngsters in the backfield, almost as though Michigan didn't know who to key off of. Ball carrier gets tripped up that time. It was Parker. Tripped at the line of scrimmage and knocked down for no gain. Well, you know that Michigan just came off that drive. Nine minutes, they controlled the ball in 53 seconds in that third quarter, so they found some soft spots running the football. They just couldn't get it in in the five-yard line, so you have to understand if you're A&M that if they get that ball back, they've still got those creases that you've got to be able to get points and keep the ball away from Michigan's offense. coming. Ball is in the flat, complete to the running back. He breaks the tackle, does Hardeman, and finally comes out of bounds at the 47-yard line. And again, Clarence Thompson is a great hitter, but he doesn't always wrap up. You know, and Hardeman just ran through the tackle. 
He carried 26 times this year versus SMU for 130 yards, so he's had some game experience. Now they use him as a pass receiver out in the flat. Clarence Thompson not wrapping up. Then Andre Weathers, number 30, finishing him off. Big third down play for Corey Pulley. And then leads by three, 16 to 13. This time it's Parker and Bernard in the backfield. And bumped at the line of scrimmage, and then Bernard will take it for a couple of more to around the 50 yard line. But it's not enough for the first down as Horn and David Bowens combine on the stop. And AM will have to kick it away to Michigan. But that's the respect that R.C. Slocum has for his own defensive crew, the wrecking crew, because he's saying, hey, I'm going to kick the ball down and play some defense and turn it over to my defense and see if they can win this football game. Sean Perry kicks it away to Mercury Hayes. And he's aiming for the sideline. Hayes runs away from it. Inside the 10-yard line, and then it takes a Michigan bounce. It'll be down there, so let's take a break. 13.09 left in our ball game. A&M by three. Very difficult situation against a blitzing and stunning team like A&M. Siaka Batuka breaks a tackle, comes out over the 15, and is down at the 17-yard line. It's Warwick Holden who comes over to make the hit, a redshirt freshman out of Ailey. That was solely on Tim Biakotuka's ability to break tackle he because he was hit in the backfield. <laughs> Brandon Mitchell hit him in the backfield, just the strength of Biakotuka to break that tackle. Yeah, that's the scary thing about him and Mike when you got everybody so uptight at the line of scrimmage. If he breaks one, that might be it. You might just have to watch him from behind. Second and four. Patuka again. He'll have the first down as he takes it out across the 21. Brad Cowley will stop him at the 22. His longest run of the year, speaking of Bianca Patuka, for having 1,724 yards, his longest is 60. Ron, when you look at this situation from Michigan, I would figure that they're going to try to go to Mercury Hayes. Now, Mercury Hayes is right out here. He's working against Andre Williams. It's him right here. It's Andre Williams against him. Now, that's the corner that you figure Michigan's going to try to pick on. Here comes the blitz again. Holdman coming on the blitz. Greasy gets it away. Sips in. Almost intercepted by Trent Driver. I talked about Trent in the first half. The fact that he had been the starter. Got hurt. Wynn took over, and he couldn't get his job back from him. One of the things that Bill Bennett said on the practice field day before yesterday was, he said, Driver's going to get his chance on Thursday. He got a great chance here. They're trying to go to Mercury Hayes over the middle, number nine. The driver is there. I think more passes from the outside because that's where there's no help. There's a little help here with Driver dropping back into the middle, deflecting the ball at Mercury Hayes. Well, you could see he really had an opportunity to pick that one off. Clarence Williams at tailback. And what a cushion Hayes has over here against Andre Williams. Clarence Williams running hard right up the middle. He'll take it for close to five. McMullen comes up to hit him. And now big down for Michigan. Third down, and they need to take it out to the 33. Hail to the victor. Strikes up in the distance. One of the greatest fight songs ever. In fact, a lot of folks think that may be the best one. People from A&M wouldn't uh, agree with that as they think the Aggie War is probably number one. I don't think Ohio State and Michigan no, State would agree I, either. I don't think so either. Nor Notre Dame. Nor Oklahoma or Texas. <laughs> They've all got great things. You see that play clock coming down. Hit as he throws it and almost intercepted and it was trapped by Mercury Hay. And Michigan... Very fortunate on that series. We'll have to punt it away. Good pressure again on Michigan. When AM gets in third down, have to throw the football. Here's the pressure. Trent Driver, 28, coming in. Good pressure from Brad Crowley, 45, the outside backer. Just no place to throw the ball. There's Carroll. Waits for the snap at the 13. Oh, it's going to be short enough 
takes a huge A and inbounds. Touched by Michigan, and that ball is barely over midfield for a 26-yard kick. Mark Campbell had to touch it down, so we'll take a break. AM by three. We'll be right back. The Lincoln Continental has been so intelligently designed, it can actually read. Sensors mounted on each wheel continuously monitor road conditions. If even the slightest change is detected, the suspension can adjust in milliseconds for smoother, more precise control. So, read any good roads lately? The 32-valve Lincoln Continental with a V8 Intex system. What a luxury car should be. Patrick Ewing. <laughs> Cleveland's Dan Marley. Sylvania's long-lasting compact fluorescent bulb. Practice night after night, week after week, year after year, and eventually you might replace one of them. Sylvania. Brilliant light. Where retirees like Dave and Pat Jacobs get what it takes to cut their utility bills down to pension size? Let's go back to square one. Builder Square has money-saving values on every energy-saving product. Insulation, caulk and sealers, thermal windows, solid core doors. Everything you need to keep energy costs from going through the roof is under one roof at great square deal prices. Be sure to wear gloves when handling insulation. Builder Square. They'll get you squared away. 16 to 13, Texas A&M, just under 11 minutes to play. And Mike Godfrey, the difference, and we've talked about it all night. Field position, and it's come by way of special teams. And the edge has to go to A&M in this ballgame so far. Without a doubt, that's the difference in this football game. That's the three points that A&M's ahead, solely for the kicking game. Thanks to run. Pump got a man wide open, and he caught it. Nope, he had a foot inbound, DeAndre Hardeman. Boy, that was close. That's going to be 22 yards as Pulling had him open, waited to pull the trigger, and you be the judge on this replay. Yep, he got one foot down. Good call by the official. Yep. He had it. Good call by the official who was right on it. Sir Parker in the backfield now to running back. He gets the handoff. Stutter step, tries to get to the outside. Has five, got it off at 10. And A&M will pick up a first down on back-to-back -back plays as Winters and Ford come over to make the stop. And the field position that A&M was able to garner because of the short kick right now paying dividends, certainly in field goal range of Kyle Bryant. Well, credit Phil Bennett to the defensive coordinator because R.C. Slocum made the choice to kick the ball inside the 20. Michigan couldn't get it out against that A&M defense and set your offense back up in good field position. You got a good look at Jason Horn. He holds the career record for tackles for loss at Michigan at 122. Counterplay. Trouble in the backfield and right there is Zinkowitz. Trent comes through, gets penetration, hits Parker in the backfield and derails this drive for the moment. It's going to be a loss of five. But as you said earlier, they are in good field goal position. Sir Parker never really has a chance to go anywhere with Trent Zinkowitz and William Carr. But I believe these three freshman tailbacks have really done the job for AM tonight. And Corey Pollock has not made a mistake at the quarterback position. They've not turned the ball over. Mike, with all the changing of the three running backs, actually it's been more difficult than Michigan on exactly who to key off of, has it? Has been. Lifts up the middle, they pick it up. Pass, tipped, and should have been caught. AM has had two passes tonight. That one by Sanders went right through his hands. Earlier, a pass went through a receiver's hand at the end zone that should have been a touchdown. Chris Sanders is a really good blocker on the perimeter, on the outside, which sets up the play action passing game. When you have a receiver that blocks real well, then he can get open in the passing game. Jared Irons on the blitz. Chris Sanders, number seven, just uh, lost sight of that football and dropped the ball. 
That's twice, twice. Because it was him at the goal line at the other end. Ooh. Against a team like Michigan, you don't get many opportunities like that. It's third down. They need the nine-yard line. Pass caught at the 14-yard line. Connell with a good job of coming back to his quarterback. Not nearly enough for the first down, but it should make a chip shot for Kyle Bryant. I believe this is supposed to be the shovel draw. We're going to see the action in the backfield. And I think Albert Connell is a, is a receiver that's a second choice on this in front of Woodrow Hank. And so Corey Pulley really with a nice decision. 31-yard attempt. Stormy Case, the holder at the 21-yard line. at home and that's four field goals for him tonight so let's take a break RC's Welcome Texas Aggies right now holding on with 839 left in our ball game the good life consists of good fortune The Builder Square Alamo Bowl, San Antonio, Texas. And uh, a good look at the beautiful downtown area just around the Riverwalk. Inside, a uh, record crowd, almost 65,000 on hand for this one tonight. Between the Big Ten Conference and the Southwest Conference, next year it will be Big Ten against Big 12. It's returnable by Hayes. Pushed out of bounds in the vicinity of the 21-yard line. Well, don't forget ESPN Sports Center, Gary Miller and Craig Kilborn. Get you caught up on Temple against Memphis. Patrick Ewing injured. Another NBA highlights that's immediately following our ball game tonight here in San Antonio. Does anybody play a tougher basketball schedule than Temple? No. I don't John think so. Calipari. They seem like they play a top 20 opponent every week. <laughs> John Chaney, not Calipari. Calipari's it. I think he knows. Down the 21-yard line. Easy play action. Toomer has the catch in his head immediately and has stopped it around the 24-yard line. Why did that have so many defensive backs around it? Well, it was a play, a three-step drop. Defense reacted right away to Monty Toomer to get help out to Ray Mickens. And one thing about this AM defense, they run very well, very quick. And that was a concern of the Michigan offense to me, the quickness of the defense. Reggie Brown limping off the field, the outside linebacker who leads the team in sacks. The Akabatuka, the blocker in front, caught by the ankle. That's the only reason he couldn't break it out, and I believe. Eddie Jasper is the man who was holding on for dear life. He's from Troop, Texas, a small community, and that's his nickname, Troop. And the Troop was there to stop Tim Biakabatuka. Eddie Jasper, number 95, with the tackle. Third down. The line to make for Michigan, the 31-yard line. The Wolverines, two of ten of third down conversions tonight. Three feet set. Throws as a man open, and we got a misread here. Toomer never turned around as Greasy was looking for him to run a deep out. And a standing ovation for the Aggie defense. The route on the outside, Mercury Hayes breaking outside. Amani Toomer just running down the field. Ray Mickens was the only receiver out there to catch that football. Harris Harris on the punt for Michigan. And that, again, got a great field position because their defense was able to help hold again. Harris Harris waits at the can and hoping that he can cause not so good field position. Line drive kick. In fact, it is so short, Mickens could not return it, but it goes out of bounds at the 41, and that's a 35-yard kick. 
and the Aggies again with good field position. When you look at this game tomorrow and try to figure it out, it's, it's easy. The field position, the kicking game has been one-sided. A&M has completely dominated in that area. A&M starting their own 41-yard line. You're going to score some points and control that game and turn it over to your kicker, Kyle Bryant, with those kind of stats. Kyle has kicked four field goals in this ball game tonight, won a record 49 yards. Bernard takes it for only one. And now Greg Madison is hoping that he can get his wish as the clock is really becoming a factor. He wants a three and out so he can get it back for his offense. You've you got to take your hat off to Texas a and It's Greg Madison, defensive coordinator, looking on. But the, you lose McElroy. He's not playing. He's the biggest part of your offense, uh, two-thirds of your offense. You're playing three freshmen at the running back position, and you control a Michigan team. And you just it's been a complete team effort. Hardeman and Bernard split this time in the backfield. Hardeman, left side, gets the block, gets by his blocker. He's not going to have the first down. And you talk about a big down in this ball game. It is about a yard and a half short. As Leland McElroy looks on from the sideline. Jared Irons, the linebacker, was blitzing on this play. Almost timed it up perfect. As he comes through unblocked, tackling Corey Pollock, but after Corey Pollock was able to get the ball to Hardeman. Five minutes, 50 seconds, and counting. Now, if a and picks up a first down here, then Michigan has to start going in to the timeout bank because time will start getting away very quickly. Movement at the line of scrimmage. Contact is made, and now let's see if Michigan was drawn offside. That's William Carr who made contact. Offside, defense, five-yard field. There is a first down for the Aggies. Let's go to the sideline and check in again with Mike Adamley. Mike. Well, Ron and Mike, and Mike, you alluded to it earlier, quietly having a great night as Corey Pulling that last play, an indication with his voice inflection able to pull Will Carr over the line of scrimmage. You know, they uh, really got a feel for this kid in all of AMM's losses this year. He is the guy who has taken most of the heat, most of the criticism, but throughout it all, he has remained amazingly upbeat. I hope this guy, when he finally ends his college career tonight here at the Alamo Bowl, gets some respect, because he deserves it. The running play, Bernard continues to spin forward. He goes for three, maybe four. Sward and Thompson combine on the stop. I couldn't agree with Mike Moore because Corey Pullock has taken more than his fair share of shots this season and also uh, some at the end of last year. And you've always said it, Mike, and I agree with you 100%. Quarterbacks get too much credit but also too much blame in this uh, college game. Look at the company he's with as far as numbers of wins. Second down. The line of scrimmage is the Michigan 42. We're about to go into four and a half minutes left in our ball game. Here comes the blitz. They go with the running play. Bernard is taken by one tackler, and then it's going to be knocked down by Sword. And now here comes another third down, and Michigan uses one of their timeouts with 4:24 left in the ball game. So we'll take it with him. 19 to 13, A and M, and this one, the jury is still out. That they get in with hands on knees is Carl Humpen, and they do it for 60 minutes during the contest. And right now they know they're four minutes and 24 seconds away from helping their ball club is the 12th man. Screen is set up and set up nicely. Blocker in front, 35 to the 30, and there's a first down for AM that could start to spell doom for the Michigan Wolverines. Corey Pulig was just what you want on the screen pass out of the quarterback. Set up and then draw the defense in before he dumps the ball off to Hardeman, number 20. Sets up like it's going to be a pass and drops the ball over Hardeman's. Hardeman with the catch and the first down. Steve McKinney, number 72, with a very nice block. Mike coming from the coach. 
Coach, you understand this as well as anybody. I'm sure the coaches can't wait to get those three freshmen into spring football after this experience in this ball game tonight. Bernard goes straight ahead because of the confidence that they will exude just from this experience tonight against such a good program like Michigan. And speaking to the Wolverines, they have used another timeout to stop the clock at 342. So we'll take it with them. 1913. We'll be right back. Yep. 15 to 13, our score. 342 left in the ball game. Here comes the blitz from Michigan. Hit in the backfield. Bernard fights his way to the 25, now the 24. And it will be third down, Texas A&M. Ron, putting a period on Corey Pulley. If he holds on and wins this football game tonight, this will be his 33rd win as the quarterback at Texas A&M. And he's tied right now with Tommy Frazier. Nebraska who has 32 wins and three losses, so Tommy Frazier would have to win that game. Michigan has just used their final timeout to stop it with 3.29 showing on the clock. You look at the green team on the sideline as he discusses with his offensive coordinator, Fred Jackson, exactly what they'll do if and when they get this football back here. Monty Tuma looks up at the clock, saying we still got time. Mike Adamley is standing next to a longtime friend down in the field that I want to say congratulations to. Billy Pickard is just finishing his 31st year at Texas A&M and has just been named Associate Athletic Director for facilities at, uh, at uh, Bryan College Station at Texas A&M. He started off 31 years ago as a trainer and uh, then became equipment manager and uh, let's go down to Mike Adamley uh, well well Michael has walked away from him right now there's Billy standing there next to him one of the really nice guys in college football and he has been put in charge of the facilities there at the stadium at Texas A&M 31 years and now associate athletic director we wish him well just one of the nicest Roll the pocket, get the pass away, should have been caught, went right through Deshaun Smith's hands. Now the tough thing about that, Mike, third down, plus the fact it stops the clock with 324. Yeah, but you're bringing on Mr. Automatic, Kyle Bryant, you're in field goal position to wrap this one up if you can make this field goal. And of course, what Michael is uh, referring to, if, if he knocks this one down and makes it 22 to 13, then... The Wolverines are in a two-score situation. 27, 49, 47, and 31 yards. This one, a 41-yard attempt. He hit the upright again, and he missed this one. And the jubilation on the Michigan side of the field is very evident. The Wolverines know they're not out of this one yet. The second time tonight that he has hit the upright. The last time he carried him through. This time he didn't get the roll. And they got to turn this game back over to the wrecking crew defense. But Brian Greasy now, as you look at the field goal, just hits the upright, bounces back. Leland McElroy on the sideline, the running back injured, knows Michigan's got another chance with the football. Let's survey the numbers by Greasy so far in this game tonight as the Wolverines have a player down on the playing field. Greasy, 6 of 16, 106 yards. And in the second half, Mike has only hit 2 of 11 in this second half of play. They have not been able, Michigan has not been able to tackle to block Keith Mitchell, the outside linebacker. He's too quick for the Michigan tackle. And this a good matchup right here. We'll keep our eye on Keith Mitchell, number 23. Mike, look on the field at the a and defensive players begging this crowd to come alive for them as Clarence Thompson has been helped off the field. Michigan, Michigan fans are standing. A&M fans are standing as Thompson helped to the sideline. We have 319 to play. Our score, A&M 19, Michigan 13. 
It's got, Michigan has got to find a way to block number 23, Keith Mitchell. Throwback screen to Floyd. There was so much going on. Brian just overthrew him by five yards, probably. The reason Keith Mitchell, they tried to, a good call by Fred Jackson, trying to control Keith Mitchell, tried to screen him on that side, but he read the screen, was able to come off and make the play. You know what's amazing? They have the ball at the 24, Mike. This is their third best possession start out of their 12 tonight. And as we mentioned, they have no timeouts left. Crazy going on top. Nickens has the cover. Toomer, the intended receiver. Michigan wanted an interference call, and there will be none. Now, that's good coverage by Ray Nickens. He was in the pocket of Amani Toomer. Given up. He's five foot eight, and he was a little disappointed when the defensive coaches told him that they were going to put him on the Mercury Hayes. He wanted to be on Amani Toomer. He said, don't worry about my height. I'll take care of myself. Ray Mickens, 5'8 against Amani Toomer, 6'4 right in his pocket. Good coverage. Third down. They need the 35-yard line. Chris Howard in the backfield this time. Number eight. Incomplete. Toomer couldn't get up to it. It'll be fourth down. Mickens with the cover again. The outside throws at 10, 12 yards are there, but the Michigan just can't make the completion. Amani Toomer was open. Ball thrown a little bit too high, and uh, this is the ball game right here. Three minutes left, and in fact, with the fourth down situation, we'll just go silent, and the crowd will let you know what happened. makes the catch and just by a foot has the first down Mickens with the cover and the Wolverines are still alive if Michigan comes back and wins this football game Chris Floyd number seven with a mighty big block to give Brian Greasy the time to get that ball off Mike I think this must be cramps on Michigan but Mickens is down they cannot afford to lose no. it. they're already yes. too thin in the secondary and if he goes out of this ball game I'm sure that Amani Toomer is going to see this football. Well, let's see who they got left if it were to happen. Because you got Andre Williams, who has acquitted himself well, who's a bit at corner. I guess you'd have to take Toya Jones to that uh, to that corner. Number seven, Chris Floyd, right here, going to get a nice block to give Brian Greasy the time that he needs. There's a step up on that win, number nine. And Brian Greasy just stands in there and makes the completion of Monty Toomer. First down, Michigan. Two minutes, 52 seconds left to play in our ball game. a and in by six. Should have time to throw here because I'd say they play zone and not blitz with Ray Mickens out of the ball game. You're right. That's exactly what they drop into. Gets his pass away and it's picked up. Andre Williams. Andre Williams just stepped inside, made the interception, was picked on a little bit early in the ball game, but rallied to make a big play here in the fourth quarter. I really think Brandon Mitchell is the man who 
got his hand in his face enough that just kind of made him not have a clear enough picture to throw that ball. Big difference tonight in the speed of this ball game. The quickness of Texas A&M has overcome the size and bulk and strength of the Michigan team. Quickness has been the difference on the defensive team of A&M. Michigan, as we mentioned, cannot stop it. They have no time on Mercury Hayes going to go down and run a route right in front of Andre Williams. Breaks the route. It's a curl route. He's trying to take it outside. He slips with the ball thrown a little bit too slow. Andre Williams able to break on the ball. Wasn't really threatened by the speed of Mercury Hayes because it was falling down. Andre Williams kind of sat on that pattern and made a good interception. to the 20-yard line. Clock runs with 146, now 145. There'll be a lot of questions on both these teams as they enter next year. You want to win the bowl game because it helps so much in recruiting and positive attitude going to spring practice. At uh, Texas A&M, will Leland McElroy be back? I hope so, because he hasn't played that much as a college player. His coach, R.C. Slocum, will be mentioned for Arizona. He was in it the last time, the Cardinal job, along with probably John McAvick and Bill Walsh, uh, former 49er coach. Stopped at the 19 and a half, and the clock is at 104 and now 103. So it's fourth down. Don't forget, Sports Center coming up. Gary Miller, Nick Kilburn standing by. Temple against Memphis. Patrick Ewing injured, and also other NBA highlights. That and more on Sports Center, which is due up next here on ESPN. Ron, Michigan has a very young football team. They'll be solid next year. They get Scott Drys back. Back. They'll have a nice battle in the spring. Uh, in the early fall next year for the quarterback position there, but a loaded football team coming back at Michigan. I thought they were very solid this year when we had them against Boston College. A lot of talent. Well, a going to let this run all the way down, and now they're going to call a timeout with two seconds on the play clock, 27 seconds on the game clock, and they said, Kyle Bryant, come back out here and let's uh, try it again. So we'll take a break. We'll come back and take a look after this. He's down. Kick is on the way. And he got it. That's a Builder Square Alamo Bowl record. Three field goals in the ballgame is the old record. That's four by Kyle Bryant. But most importantly to the Aggies, that gives them a 22 to 13 lead with only 23 seconds left. You talked about earlier how the field goal kickers, when they go out, no one wants to talk to them. He's the most popular guy on the campus now. He high five and everybody. So the celebration begins on the near sideline. Mike with, the, with McElroy, he has been out a lot this year. Do you think? He has really taken a chance if he tries to come out with, uh, I mean, the scouts haven't seen him as much as some would like. His first start, actually, was the LSU game this year. He played behind Rodney Carter and Greg Hill, so he hasn't played a lot of football. Really an outstanding young man. You hope he stays in. He needs to play a little bit more. Uh, he would be, it'd be a chancy situation for him. Mike Adamley, uh, any thoughts from you on that situation? Well, I talked to Leland yesterday, and he said it is something that he's going to consider. He has until January 10th to tell the NFL that he would like to be eligible for the draft. The person that he really relies on, however, is his oldest brother, Lee uh, Sr., or Lee Jr., rather, who's the AD at Cal State Sacramento. And Lee has been uh, his inspiration all his life, so I know that Lee will probably give him some sound advice, whatever direction that may be. In shape. And of course, he's had a, a, a brother in the National Football League who could tell him about the pros and cons is R.C. Slocum gets a cool greeting, which coaches know in these bowl, bowl games that that's a greeting that they, uh, they really enjoy. That means victory. As that ball goes out of bounds, and Michigan will have it at their 35-yard line, still with 23 seconds showing on the clock. 
thought R.C. Slocum made a good point the other day in jest. He said that to come and enjoy these bowl games, you got all these events. What he said is, hey, let's play the game. It's the game of the week. Winner stays for a week and enjoys himself. Loser goes home. <laughs> he was talking about all the things that go on during bowl week. Lloyd Carr, they took interim away from his name at Michigan this year and, uh, and for very good reason. Class act to, uh, to who will do very, very well for the Michigan Wolverines. And this bowl game will help them because they keep recruiting this state of yeah. Texas. Yeah. Well, being here in the bowl game, this will help them. He caught it, yes, at the 44-yard line. Mercury Hayes going out of bounds. Hayes. And it looks as though he either injured his leg or has a cramp, one of the two. And the, the way they're grabbing at that cap, I would say it is a cramp. 14 seconds left. Mike and I will visit with you next from the Outback Bowl down in Tampa on Monday at uh, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, Penn State and Auburn. I think we're going to have one just as close as we're seeing here tonight in San Antonio. Same type of game, a tough approach by Penn State, solid against the quick Auburn football team. Three wide receivers out, deep in the end zone, caught for the touchdown by Toomer with five seconds showing on the clock. Brian Greasy just threw this ball as far as he could throw it to Amani Toomer who made a great catch. He in that catch is going high to make the reception and using your six more frame. Shiltumer officially credited with a 44-yard touchdown pass from that young man, Brian Greasy. Brian Greasy just slings it in the end zone, the 6-4 frame of Amani Toomer for the touchdown. Hamilton with the extra point, and he nails it. So, how quickly can you get an onside kick and then get your field goal unit on the team, on the field? <laughs> Texas A&M is very concerned about it. They'll have their uh, hands team in place. So special teams convening on the near side. And we have a 22 to 20 ball game. Five seconds left. Sean Slocum, son of R.C. Slocum, is the special teams coach. And they have them gathered on the sidelines. And as Mike said, the good hands team will be the group that goes out there. You even remember, though, I'm sorry? Even though the odds aren't good for Michigan, you can't tell that to the AM coaches. Now they're sweating. Hamilton will handle this kickoff rather than Felix. Obviously, he is the best at dealing with the onside kick. This is where if he pooches the kick, you have formed your guys to fair catch it. If you're a &M. is loose. It has been recovered by Texas A&M. Lowry got on it. So they've got two seconds to get off the clock and Texas A&M will record a victory in the Builder Square Alamo Bowl for 1995. I just thought it was a good game plan by both teams. AM really just the quickness and speed was the difference in this ball game tonight, Ron. Once again, our final score, Texas AM 22, Michigan 20. Stay tuned for Sports Center, Craig Kilborn and Gary Miller with scores and highlights for the NBA and the NHL, as well as college ball and NFL news. Now for Mike Godfrey, Mike Adamo, and our entire ESPN crew. Ron Franklin saying so long from San Antonio, Texas. Congratulations to Texas A&M, the 1995 Builder Square Alamo Bowl champion. <laughs>